Hey, we're live here Saturday, November 11th, 2023. Happy Veterans Day. Uh, we're going to have some anglers from Lake Whitney, Texas jump on. That's going to be fun. Um, and I've never been to Lake Whitney, so we're going to see how that goes today. Brian and Drag Masters are on right now. Once you're on, let's uh, get any questions about today's event. We're just going to have some fun, do a little uh, catfish and coffee. Live on the water. And hopefully we have a few of these guys jump in, so it's going to be fun. We'll get the comments open up. You can hear me. Fish on a big bike. What's going on, man? All right, while everybody's jumping on, I'm going to play a video that's important to me, important to the industry. Um, it was a, a recap video of our Fishing for Freedom event that we, uh, with Twisted Cat and a lot of other companies in the industry, help with. Uh, and that this year is going to be uh, June 1st, and it's been going on for over 10 years. But this video kind of will showcase a little bit of what it's about and what it does, how it changes lives. And uh, take a minute to watch this video, and then we'll get the morning started. And when you fish for freedom may have actually saved my life, it's uh, kind of choke up about it. It's it's, it's absolute truth, you know. It's uh... <laughs> and when you get on a gentleman's boat, you become family. <laughs> It's, it's it's brought me it's got me a hometown now i have a home a new home in quincy <laughs> the program that they do for the veterans here is above and above is just outstanding uh from the world war ii veteran to the uh, uh the vietnam and to the iraq it is uh very outstanding and as the young lady said it is all about family uh family is number one and when you get on a gentleman's boat you become family and the program is generated just for family my name is louis deemers i'm from quincy a barn here raised went world war ii i met a real good friend he's taken me fishing four times now and this will be the fifth coming up and uh, we're looking forward to catching that big one like everybody else, you know. I think it's a great organization. Uh, it amazes me Quincy pulled off something like this. This is really I, I, big time. So Lou and I met uh, 2018 here at Fishing for Freedom. Uh, took him out fishing. Um, 94 years old, he crawled in and out of the boat. Uh, better really than, than I did, and I hate to, hate to say that, but... Uh, he caught the biggest fish, outfished me, and uh, we've been fishing together ever since uh, since that year. So it's uh, I don't think Lou really understands how much of an honor it is for me to take him out every year. So We, we had the banquet where we honored the warriors, um, and then we thank them for their service, uh, give them a, a great meal. We're going to have a banquet, we're going to take them out in the river, we're going to fish, and you're going to have a friendship for life. And that's what we ended up doing. And it's been growing exponentially for the last 13 years. It's up to, I think we have 300 soldiers this year, which is quite a feat for all the volunteers that are here that are participating. Good day on it's, this means a lot to me because it, it's 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 brought me it's got me a hometown now i have a home a new home in quincy um they helped me with getting an actual physical home i i went through some rough times a few years ago and uh the people that i've met through fishing for freedom somehow got me a house to live in so i'm really grateful for the i mean adam kyle uh glenn sanders bob haverman i mean everybody that is it, it, they're, they really are family to me, and it's that's 
I mean, it's, you know, blood thick in the water, all that. I, it's These people are, are absolute family for me. Me and, and my other family, you know, my real family. <laughs> About eight years ago, I got a chance to go to Fishing for Freedom. I, I didn't really know what it was, but uh, I got a chance to go. I was so broke, believe it or not, that I took a train. Okay. And uh, a local guy fishes catfish, Buddy Weisenberger, actually picked me up from the from the train station. Okay, that's how broke I was. And I didn't have a car that was working to get here or nothing. And uh, you know, Fishing for Freedom paid for the hotel, all that. I got all my free stuff. First fishing pole in, in years since I was a kid. And, and first fishing tournament ever that I was ever a part of. And uh, I'll be darned, we won the whole thing. Long and short of things, here it is years later. I'm celebrating five years clean and sober next month, okay, which is just mind-boggling. Um, I took my own car here with my own boat and took a veteran out myself now, which is just just amazing you know it's to be able to do that and to see it from the other side of things with the uh, people on the side of the road with the flags and motorcycles it's just absolutely just 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 amazing amazing event um uh, I married live in south carolina drove a thousand miles to get here <laughs> and hoping i can do it every year i've been doing this this is my third year with lewis jordan amazing event for all the warriors to get out and experience camaraderie having fun and your boater is becomes a, like family and you get to go fish with them even outside of this. My boater, Lewis Jordan, we go over to his home lake and go fishing and also go camping with him other times throughout the year. I've been to Fishing for Freedom every year. I've watched it grow from starting out with 60 warriors to about 300. I come every year just to, you know, be able to fish, meet people and show the appreciation from the community and all the hard work and efforts that everybody puts together for it. Look forward to it every single year. It's nice to, to give back to some of the veterans and plus I love to fish. So uh, it's always a good time. Everybody, these guys do a great job putting this together. One thing positive can lead to two, can lead to three, can lead to a complete turn, turn, turn around in your life. And uh, you know, God willing, it can all come together. I really got to thank them for everything. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's a great event. Uh, an event that gives you purpose, gives you something to really look forward to, giving back. So, all right, we got Brian on, Koi, and the world famous. How's the fishing going? Uh, it's been good. Give me a define good. Uh, we got fish in the box. That's good. How many rods can you use at this tournament? Do what? How many rods can you guys use at this tournament? We can use 10 rods in this tournament. So we have eight planer boards going and two long lines. Wow, well, I don't even know if I have 10 rods. <laughs> we have to combine ours. So you're dragging a bunch of boards. So it's a dragon lake where you can drag some baits. Yeah, you can drag most of what we've seen. We got here yesterday, and uh, I hear a lot of people are anchoring. I don't. We don't see anything. We're playing bumper pull with uh, striper guides. It's a good striper lake too. Apparently, and I see uh, about eight of them. About eight right around us right now. Looks like. Uh, Shay and Courtney are on. Let's see if I can get them. Yeah, there's Shay. What's, What's up, up, Jay? Can you, can you turn your screen? Yeah. Somehow. Are you using Starlink right now? 
Do what? Oh, we're not. Oh. We didn't need load it up. The See, we have it in the truck, but we didn't bring it in, in the boat. Is the picture okay? Yeah, picture looks amazing. You guys look good and warm, too. That's a little, a little breezy and cool here. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. That worked better. Yeah, that looks good. So who all do you got with you on the boat today? You guys got a team of me. four? Yeah, there's me, Courtney, Justin, and Stevie. Stevie wrapped up in the been going for y'all today. It hadn't been bad. It's it hadn't been great for me all week at all. With catching a couple fish a day, but uh, we've got three right now, so we've got weight, which is good. So just uh, I guess Brian, tell me a little bit about this term. It's three fish, five fish. Is there a slot? It's a five fish tournament, any size. Uh, I'm not sure. Hey, Coy, what's the minimum on this link? He's not listening. He's trying to help Cutter get. So there's probably like a minimum 12 or 15. Is that going to affect you guys today? A, a minimum, <laughs> right? It hasn't yet. We're only like one more fish getting our limit. So uh, it was going pretty good this morning. We kind of got off track and went a little bit further than we planned on going so we'll probably do this another 10 15 minutes and then we're going to roll up and get back on uh, where we started yeah i did some looking last night when i got home i didn't get home till probably 11 11 30 and just and put some stuff together and it seems like it's a beautiful lake with some cliffs and it doesn't look like it from brian's view right now but <laughs> well that's the state park in the background it's pretty flat in that area this is a really good catfish lake. I mean, uh, this is our first time here, uh, but we looked at some of the previous ways. I think February was Rod, some 30s and maybe a 40s weighed in, plus you know, around 100 pound weigh ins. But they have big fish. Just that time of year. Uh, we split up yesterday with two different boats, pre fishing, and Koi went north. And saw a lot of thermocline like we saw at Wachita, so we, we stayed oh no stayed away from that Jay, how about you guys you guys are dragging boards and shallow water or no we're we're ranging we're mid lake uh we're coming out ten foot or running out the feet but yeah, we're pulling. So we're pulling. Hey, y'all want to get out of the? Y'all want to get away from this copper boat? Just yeah. pull them in. Then. Are there? Are both of you got hangups around you too? Do you guys have a bunch of hangups, or is it pretty opened up? Uh, pretty. It's pretty open. One thing. Looking at the back, it just like, looks just like. Possible. Kind of similar to a Texoma in a way. It's got a lot of shallow water flats, and then you've got the channel the whole. So the river's 50 foot all the way up into the main river. But now all the all the flats, from what I've seen so far, it's just been pretty well wide open. What are you guys making a move, Brian? Yeah, we're going to reel in. It's going to take us a few minutes, and then we're going to make a move. We're going to pull the JT right in. We've got striper guides all around us to make the uh, bite stop for us in this area where they are. I've got all the fish out of this hole anyways. I mean, Brian, let me ask you this. Do you feel more comfortable today with skinny in the boat? Well, let me, tell, let me tell you a little story. We already got a story. We already got a story first off this morning. Uh, we had a planer board, a far planer board, oh, God. took off. Uh, bent the pole over, skinny picks it up, or I tell him to crank down on it. He said, it's hung, it's hung. I said, just crank down on it. It's hung. So he cranked down on it, he picked the rod.
rod up, still screaming its hung, and then finally felt. We could see the rod tip bouncing, so we knew it was a fish. Anyway, that was our first big fish this morning. So we've had to do a little education as usual. Skinny's been off for a while, racing cars and not fishing, so we're having a little education classes all morning. I don't know if he's racing cars or racing airplanes. I think the last time I seen I him, he was did a flyby. Alex. Yeah. Alex. In Skinny's defense, yeah, Brian, what, in Skinny's defense, ask Brian what he did to the first planer board and pulled it was bent over. I pulled it out of his mouth. <laughs> really? I and I told him, I, I told him this morning, and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the captain of the boat. I'm gonna keep us on our, keep you on the fish. And they were both, I don't know what they were doing. And the bow went over and I jumped up there and pulled it out of its mouth. I've been tying rigs because Skinny and Brian didn't pre-tie anything. Boy, well, I know how you feel. Hey, let me tell you something, Allie. This is why we went back to racing cars because the only <laughs> person I got to listen to is the announcer in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay, boat, are they? Yeah, we got fish in the boat. And we're having fun. So. It looks like you got fish in the boat. I'm just yep. wondering if they were like 60, 70 pound fish or five pound we, like, we, we don't like to talk about that uh, too early. Dude, it looks like Courtney's about ready to reel down. She's in the position. Don't, yeah, don't. Courtney, do not do. Don't pull a Brian. He's swimming sideways. Ooh, is it on? Yes or no? Got it. That's a lot of work pulling 10 rigs in, Brian. It is. I'm glad I'm the captain. Ten, ten rigs. Two, I've uh, noticed that. You haven't moved. You haven't made two steps since you've been on live. No, I'm watching the You've got your macro yeah. for taking some coats off. I said hurry up. We lost 10 rigs. All minutes. right, let's, All pull, right. let's pull Courtney up and see how they're going here. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's a watch it all special. This is the one. Yeah. Is. Now, what is that? A is that one of them stink bait worms? What do you got for bait? Oh, it is a cut bait. <laughs> Oh, look at that. There you go. Awesome job. Yeah. Looks like good hook set. Is that a keeper? Yeah, for now. Keeper? Yeah. For now. If we get five, hopefully it doesn't go to weigh in. Clear? <laughs> So do you think, you think on this lake, is this your first time on this lake? Yeah, I stay a pre-fishing and 30 mile an hour winds and here we are. It's It seems... It is. Not in you can't can in three foot waves and there's a lot of water to cover and not knowing where to go or what to look for. I just narrowed it down to a section of the lake and just kind of went off. But it, from what I've seen, yeah. it really good. It had that. What do you got? What are you playing for bait? Did you catch bait there? Or? Yeah, I've got probably eight, like twelve to fourteen inch gizzard shad, and then three common carp. I want to put this in the live wheel. Go, the cast of the day right there. I 
fast are you moving? Like 0. 0.5. We went with the wind, and now we're going to try against the wind just to spread them out further. Running eight rods just to get more of a spread. But I've, from yesterday and today, I've tried anything from 0. 0.9, from 0. 0.4 to 0. 0.9, and that 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6 range is what's worked best for me. So how far a drive is it for you, your team, to get to Lake Whitney? Uh, it was two and a half hours. It depends on what, what town you go. If you go through Fort Worth at a certain time, it'll take four or five hours. <laughs> you hear our Who call? Who's driving? I, I know how you drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was driving. <laughs> I can't barely ever keep up with you. So we got places to go. Yeah. Fish if you ain't there. So what else have you have you guys been fishing the last month or so? Uh, I've been pretty busy at work being on call, so I, I have not got. I think I've only fished twice in the last three weeks. It's been it's been nice to get out. Hey, Alex. Hey. Can you hear a catfish call? No, what is it? Ready? <laughs> if you think I'm lying, they play that at least 20 times a day. <laughs> I love it. I'm talking, they put the phone on the fishing line and send it down into the water. It works. <laughs> hey, it could work. I'm telling you. <laughs> Sometimes you got to throw everything. The last tournament we won, Justin put it on the line, sent it down. We was we wouldn't even done lapping yet, and the rod went over, and that was the big fish of the tournament. Oh my! So it's stuck. I mean, that's kind of the same thing as the rattle. You know what I mean? It's right. it's making some noise down there. So we'll try anything. So you're all using ten rods, also? Uh, I'm running eight, ten. For me, I have too many hang-ups and twist-ups if you have fish go sideways, but I'm only going to run That is that. true. It looks like Brian's just, he ran. A, we, so I don't know if you are familiar with this, but <clears throat> anytime somebody makes a run, we just call it, they're going to do a JT Ray. So JT okay. Ray likes to, likes to burn some fuel. <laughs> he really does. All right, I let's see if Brian. Certain circles, but. Lake fishing, I try not. To. I try to narrow my pre fishing. I try to narrow it down to a couple. That's where I want. To. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Has Cutter joined? Nope, not seen Cutter. Jerry said they're running to a new area and he'll get on. Uh, Cutter said they got it figured out. He just texted me. He's, he's not on here. How many times have you guys made a run so far today? First run. That's our first run. Hold on a second. Is Coy sitting down? Yeah, yeah. I'm tying a rig. That's nice. He's got five Hold on a second. It's tournament day, and you guys are tying rigs in the boat. No, we broke, we broke one off. You hear me? On. Yeah, I hear you. Alex, I'm the only one that's been nonstop here. Tie rigs, freaking foot poles out, real poles in. You not fish in the boat. Skinny's the only one doing anything, it looks like, today. I mean, this is the first time I've seen Brian on the back deck. Brian, did you did you guys hear their catfish call? I, I would be worried about you guys. What? <laughs> they got a they got a special catfish call and it, it could be the game changer for today. Yeah, I don't have that call. It's sacred edition. Okay, cat nappers are on. Let's bring the cat nappers in and see if this works here. Hold on just a second. All right, team uh, cat napper. Can you hear us okay? Yes, sir. 
Does somebody else have the phone on in that? Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, I just get some back feed. Back I don't know feed. if somebody else is up there. Um, no. I don't hear anything. Oh, you guys, you guys. Radio is on. Is that better? Yes, that sounds good. Actually, everybody sounds great. We just got to get Brian to do uh, something for their win. They got a little win behind them. I got Brian muted right now. <laughs> Looks like everybody's dragging boards. Who all is on uh, Team Catnappers? Keith Kellum and Cutter Holloway. How are you guys doing today? I just uh, see one guy working right now. <laughs> he just caught a little one. Um, we've got two little fish. That's it. So does anybody know, is there a, today, is there a length limit? I mean, is there a, a, a minimum? In Texas, there's not. It, you, it was 12, it was 12 inches up until three years ago. Up How's until that? three years ago. How's that sounds that? good, Brian. All of you look great right now. Thank you. I've been working on it. How them dragon rigs? You got, well, you got floats and rattles, and it looks like you guys got the Christmas tree on some of them rods, Brian. Yeah, we're trying a little bit of everything. We've got skipjack, drum. And fresh gizzard chat. Actually, skipjack, I believe, has probably been our best bait today. We're fixing to drag through some stuff we've never done this before. I'm not going to say it online. <laughs> See how it goes. We'll see how those. We need some of that coffee so out here. Oh, I know. I need actually. I need a fresh cup out here in a minute. <laughs> I'm warm. I'm in. I'm uh, way north. I don't even know. Let's see what the temperature is here at home. But it is. Let's see today. It looks beautiful outside, but it's right now. It's 41 degrees, and it got down to 29 last night. What is it down there? And on Whitney? Yeah, I think it's 55 this morning. I'm not sure what it is yeah. right now. Yeah, it's it's chilly here. That's why I'm staying inside. And uh oh, another another nibble. Another Shane, minute. How do you know? How do you know when you got a bite on one of them? I mean, them little. Sometimes that can be a, when you're when you're dragging a planter board, catching a fish like that. Sometimes you don't know. The uh, I I watch the planter board just as much, if not more, than the actual rod tip. It seems to like if they take it and take go sideways one way or the other, the planter board will just start acting completely weird. And then I focus on that rod. Since I walk to the SPLK with the they're a medium heavy, but the tip seems way way. It seems to notice the smaller fish takes a lot easier to the bite. Because that, that means a lot when you're, I mean, especially if you're dragging boards. I've, I've been dragging boards where, you know, small fish have cleaned the bait off or you had a small fish on and you don't know. And then that's, now I know you guys can use like 18 rods in this tournament, but if you're down to six and then, you know, you don't have bait on a couple of them because it's a small fish. Right. We can use 10 rods. Eight hours. 10 rods. Yeah, this is how a real it looks like. It, these are real tournament <laughs> rules, not twisty kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Coy, Nicoy, are you saying that because you need to use more than six at a time? Is that the problem? I like using ten. <laughs> well, you know, I know, but uh, we're not in Texas a lot. We're working on I'm getting a, in Texas. You know, the boys aren't as talented as us. You can barely handle six. I, I, I'm going to be careful. I've already. already I've already called Brian out. You want me to call you out too? 
I, I'll be honest with you, that's the first six. So. You need to worry about Charles Blair beating you one on one. You still won't take him up on his offer. Oh, oh whatever. Blair, seriously, I we, we he talks smack online and we get off and then he closes and says, Hey, I'm just I'm just joking. I don't really <laughs> yeah. want to go one on one. You know he's laughing watching this right now. I know. <laughs> I know he just, I just rolled out of bed. It's nine thirty, so he's probably laying in bed right now on his phone. <laughs> Can you spread those out a little bit, Skinny? Wow, no so everybody's dragging. Whoa, this boat's got twin engines. I just noticed that. I, he's on an offshore boat. You gotta see his cabin. Yes. Wow. We got a houseboat. <laughs> I'm like laughing. Double sleeper cab. Brian's laughing. Oh, Brian's laughing, but he's out there in his coat and all of his rain gear and wearing short sleeves. I was going to say, I just, whenever I seen baiting the hook, I mean, they had a t shirt on or a cutoff on. It's yeah. like, how are they doing they got, they got central heat and air in the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Looks like Billard and Hogan are on, and somebody's sleeping in the boat. Let's try to see if we can add five here. Let's see. Looks like we're up. How's it going, guys? Morning. 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 What do you guys are? You guys are dragging or just sleeping? Uh, we're not dragging. We're anchored up. Anchored up. How's it going today? It's been pretty slow. Yeah. <laughs> pretty slow is an understatement. Is that why we're doing some sleeping on the boat? We've been <laughs> we've been uh, napping in shifts. Well, I try to trick the fish into biting. You know, I pay the fish. Yeah, usually usually it's just kind of look the other way and close your eyes. The rod might go down. It looks about. like you guys are in some shallow water. Uh, we're not very deep. Uh, I don't think that over four foot. Hardly ever. <laughs> we're, we're border. We're borderline on that right now. I'm out there. I'm off. Yep. Hey, Coy, you get me a drink out of there. Ooh, what is that big piece of bait, Coy? He's a giant. That's a that's a drum. Jasper, wow. Jasper, Jasper dude. Diller, these guys are throwing like giant baits. And you should see the fish they're getting. So nobody, so there is no length or there is no minimum on this lake as far as we know. Well, it's 12 inches. So Brian, you guys might have to look at that the last few you caught. <laughs> Who said it's 12? No, they, no, uh, that, they, they changed it last year. It, it used to be 12. They took the 12 inch minimum. Oh, it used to be 12. Okay, so that... I wonder why they changed that. Get the little ones out. <laughs> Give them a chance to have some. Can you even get any meat on one of those? I think you got to fry it whole. <laughs> these I don't are, know, we don't catch little ones, so we don't know what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what does everybody think uh, big fish will be today? I'm not talking about spread. I'm talking about together. hope it's 20. <laughs> you hope it's 20? I don't know what it is. Dylan, what do you think? 30? I think 30, 30, 30 to 32. Somewhere there. Watch out. Does that mean you got one 30 to 32? Yeah, not yet. Wait to the way and find out. So, Brian, tell me a little bit about today. It's 
how many this is two tournament trails coming together for like a big showdown yeah it's central texas catfish trail um uh, and it's big country catfish trail well, they did this last year on another lake i think this is their second year to do it the judge has been doing it. That's a great turnout. I believe, 54 I, boats. I believe it's 54. Is that right? That's, I think that's what I heard last night. How'd the cow kind of go? It was exciting. <laughs> that was some of the biggest cow cows I've ever been around last night. There's a lot of money. I've never seen so many. I've never seen so many teams go for over three hundred dollars up to six, up to five or six hundred bucks. I think Cutter jinxed me. Cutter by you? I think so. It's what he texted me this morning. Did Did you say that two teams went together? So everybody was with another team, or how that work? Yeah, they paired the team so it wouldn't take as long. We're actually How they paired pair up them? with we're paired up with uh, the Dillards and Devin Hogan. So they just paired it by numbers, Alex, and we were team forty six, and Jerry, John, and Devin were team forty seven. So we our teams went together. And uh, well, I hate to say this, when they came on, they were sleeping on the boat. So I don't know if that's a good. <laughs> well, Jerry bought their team for five hundred eighty dollars, so they were confident about something. Yeah, we were confident about I don't you think they were bidding on Dragon Fest. <laughs> you bought partners better pull you in with the deal. Skinny had, Skinny had it at 560, and then Jerry. Yeah, Skinny let us down. He said he was going to buy our team, and he got set down by Jerry. So I would let those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Got the boat, Brian. Do you got four boards on each side, Brian, it looks like? We do. We have four boards on each side, and then we have two long lines, two long down the middle. I'd be careful because the JT's out there anywhere. He'd run right through all that. That'd be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching. Is he watching? Yeah. I seen his boats for sale. Yeah. I wonder if he's had any bikes on it yet. Yeah, he's looking for more. He's looking for one that has a better fuel economy. Yeah, I know. I think it's like for an electric engine. Unfortunately, the one he orders is not any better. <laughs> oh, my. So it looks like. Yeah. On <laughs> tournament at Arrowhead, with everything out, there was a sailboat race. And these self oh, to go around us to go around a buoy and on their way back. No, they didn't have to go. <laughs> they, no. they picked their own line. They picked their own line, but on the way back, these two old men were racing the air right through all of the lines. And Jay was yelling at him. He's like, cut the lines, cut the lines. It spun their boat completely around. Oh, my. And they, they lost the race and they got a bunch of. Uh, tackle on their boat <laughs> ran up to the top of the cell i found the spool to try to break it and i laid the top of the cell completely over where the guys ran on the opposite side of the boat and they kept saying wow. put in. we said some, we exchanged wow. some words i can only imagine we was every bit of 500 yards from the buoy they had to turn around and all the others went less they decided to go they made the wrong choice. I guess. We got it on video at one of these. It'll be pretty silent. <laughs> Making it for kids. Send that video to Alex so he can play it for us. <laughs> yeah, I just, had to, I just had to keep it on mute. Yeah. I, I was I was pretty hot. Looks like we got a little action. Dillard and Hogan are standing up for the first time. We got them both on their feet. <laughs> Not sure what that means. Just checking yeah, the bait. Yeah. A little bite. I want to know why Dillard has his bimini top up. Because we're too lazy to take it down. 
Okay, that's good enough. I thought hey, at least they're being on. Hey. Skinny. Oh, skinny. Oh. <laughs> Boy, you got me on that, too. <laughs> he about fell out of the boat. That's I'm, I'm ready for some action. Me too. I'm dealing with an emergency at home right now. <clears throat> Come on, Jeff. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you got Brian on the boat. So some of you I see don't even have the trolling motor remote in your hand. Brian keeps turning it. You just don't like to – what's your story, Brian? You just like to be precise? Can you hear me? Brian? Boy? Hello? They got some issues on their boat. They're probably re refreshing it. It's probably because they're drifting the channel edge. This lake has no trip on the ledge. For some reason, every time they're in, they're just off the edge. Did somebody call you, Brian? Yeah. Work call. Skinny, you want anything out of the killer? Uh, no, I got my. I got my uh, you want Oh, is that a bite? No. I got all bait stacked up right here. I don't know where it is. We'll take that to the So, Courtney, do you guys, are you just on a the special line you got the trolling motor on like north heading or are you following a ledge or because nobody on your boat's running the trolling uh, running a remote at all yeah we just have it on north heading and brian then i don't know if brian and i'm trying to figure this out brian are you keeping that remote in your hand to look busy so you don't have to do anything no. it's going like this this is yeah. what we're doing <laughs> Um, so we're we're pulling boards and grass. So I'm kind of the grass is in and out. So I'm just trying to get us right on the edge of it. JP said he should have went fishing, sitting in a tree stand, seen one shooter buck out of bow range, and I ain't said nothing. Ain't catching the smack. Oh. JT, you should be fishing right now. I wonder, hey, I wonder if JT sits still in a tree stand or if he moves from tree stand to tree stand all day. Johnny said, I just sent him boring. Jay got his opening day. Oh, nice. When was opening day down there? Uh, it's uh, beginning of October. Whatever, I'd, I'd have to look at whatever day it was. Gun season started last Saturday. Last Saturday. Let's see, hey, Dillard. Can you guys hear us? We hear you. I, that is some of the fastest response I've ever seen. You turn around and stand up like that. Did you hear something or what happened? We had a rod starting to go down. And they just dropped it like they've been doing all day. I mean, that was some cat-like reflexes right there. 
What are you using circle hooks, or do you think it's one of those where they're biting soft? You got to use a J hook and reel down on them, or? Yeah, we're using circle hooks. So we've got some uh, some flooded brush and stuff like that around. We got to get them out of it. Out of it. Let's bring the catnappers back on real quick. How are we doing, catnappers? Oh, we got heat. You guys have some fish in the boat? Can you hear us, cat nappers? Yeah. Go ahead. I just seen how you guys are doing so far. Oh uh, no, we are, I was just moving the camera. You definitely must be warm because you got both got t-shirts on and these everybody else got blankets. <laughs> Boy and skinny are snuggled up to each other. Staying warm. <clears throat> Ooh, got some. I, I, I had to put a jacket back on. I don't have as much insulation as Keith does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, are you guys fishing shallow water? Uh, we're in. Now, uh, we're in 28 foot. 28 foot. Kind of interesting how everybody's fishing a little bit different and everybody's trying to seems like everyone's struggling a little bit this morning or from what they're saying you know brian talked about <clears throat> brian had a big story about a big a planter board going underwater and line taking off and i've heard those stories many many times many many times and it wasn't a big a fish it was six pounds Turn all, I'm saying, all i'm saying is skinny thought it was hung uh, and it's in the boat. It's in the live well. It's our big fish. And he's done well. He's gotten three of our five fish. Do you foresee bringing Skinny on board a little bit in 2024 and see if he can help you guys kind of move up the leaderboard? The only reason Skinny's on board today is because it's not a uh, race season's almost over. They has one more race in Missouri next week. Next weekend. Next weekend. So, uh, hey, we're at Missouri. Springfield. Springfield. What are you racing? Do what? Like, what are you racing? Are you oh. racing like modified or modified? Nice. Oh, yeah. He has a big race trailer now. He's big time. So, he just left us. I can't believe that. I kind of missed the flyover, Skinny. How I, can didn't I, really, do a flyover? I, I didn't really just leave, but, uh, you know, I sold my boat. And sold his airplane. Sold my airplane. Oh, my, I sold the airplane. Yeah, I, well, I had to. I, it was uh, pretty good, uh, pretty hard to pass up. So I'm looking for another one, though. Yeah, I still can't get over that. Got that flyover was awesome. Another. Bigger and faster. I love it. The reason he sold this boat, his airplane, because he he doesn't like rules. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't think they have rules in racing. Not if skinny does it. <laughs> yeah. What do they call that? Skinny rub. If if you're not rubbing, you're not racing. Yeah. A rub is racing. Boy, Josh, Josh, you said he just got his Dragon Master hoodie in yesterday. Right, we just got our Thanks and good luck. Thank you. Thanks for your support. <clears throat> Brian, do you have a rig in the boat you can show us? We'll kind of go through everybody's rigs and see what, what kind of their 
should look like. We're almost right there. Now. So this is what this is what we're primarily using today. We're using the bite me float, an eight dot uh, circle with a weed guard. We're using the fifty pound dragon armor, and then a two ounce dragon weight inline dragon weight. That's, that's why we have all ten of our rods rigged up with this morning. Now we do have. Uh, Different color floats, a red float, I believe. We even have a standard peg float on a on a rig. Uh, I have a green styrofoam float that's real loud. Uh, a lot of times we'll run a double hook rig, but some of the stuff that we're pulling through today, we thought it would be better to just stick with a single a single hook with less snags. We are pulling through some pretty rough stuff. And using different size baits and we're do, yeah we're using different size baits different different uh species of baits and skinny's already jumping towards a rod i've seen that it's oh there he goes he come on don't pull a brine Coy's dealing with a crisis at home with his rooster. Coy's, Coy's, with his dealing, with, Coy's dealing with a crisis at home is a uh, rooster attacked his wife this morning. Oh, my. That sounds like a story from Texas. I think he called his neighbor to come over there and uh, put it uh, put it down. <laughs> Chicken for dinner. All right, let's bring up the here kitty kitty and see what kind of uh, <clears throat> lot of stuff they're using. All right, here kitty kitty. What's up? Can you show us <clears throat> show us the rig? Kind of Brian and Coy showed us kind of what they're using. Uh, yeah. I, and I you guys, I just seen it in the camera. You guys all jumped up. Yeah. yeah, Justin. Okay. Was watching on a planter board took off sideways, skipping. We've got a master of stuff. I'm running the Dragon Master, which is Brian's pretty much the exact same thing he he had showed you with the Bite Me Float. And I believe this is the three ounce. And then I've got some regular dragon rigs i'm running the demon dragons i've actually had better luck with the glow in the dark ones like these so do you think that the rattle is I, makes better light? I, me here. I, I have had at times where it it didn't really make a difference or i just didn't catch anything on it but i think for me what little bit we have caught has been with the demon dragons and the Probably especially when it's going over like some structure or some rock, you know, it's going to make some noise. And uh, I, I had two, one of them yesterday, if I can find it. Uh, I, no, it was the day before yesterday. I actually bit the demon dragon itself. I fought it for a good five seconds and then let go. Whenever I got it in, the demon dragon didn't hang on it. I'm thinking about putting hooks on the demon dragons. Oh, because it's you think it's biting the demon dragons? I, it, I, I, yeah, that one it was new. I opened it out of the package, put it on, fished with it for two hours, and then it after fighting the fish, it didn't have paint on it, and the bait was still on the hook. You got but, uh, hook wise, I'm running the Dell's tackle 12 box and uh, a couple of Brian's weedless. I think they're 10. We're using different size baits and stuff too. Yes, we've got either trips, fillets from carp and then big head. And then we are running body chunks as well. So far, the uh, we've had three 
three on carp and one on shad. So you got four fish in the boat. Yeah. So one of them being the little 14 incher y'all just seen. So there is so Brian was talking about a thermocline on this lake. So it's obviously there's some deep water. You're staying away from that. I haven't I fished I fished 80 foot yesterday and I, I didn't see the thermocline. But, but uh I seen what could have I went I barely went up into the river yesterday just to look around and it i think that's where coy was talking about it being but uh we are planning on staying in pretty much around the 20 foot range 20 to 30 but if you never know if the bot just shuts off i might jump out into the into the channel i won't run far because it no matter where you're at on the lake the the river is deep Yeah, I've not even seen a lot of boats around you. So, I mean, it seems like it's a pretty big lake I've from had, what I've done. That. We've had a proper boats run by, but I've only got, I think, Monty Bond is probably four or 500, probably four or 500 yards behind us. I seen him earlier. Courtney must be sensing a bite because she keeps uh, easing back to the back of the boat. Our long line just, just slowly pulled over. The bot's been real finicky. They're they're playing with it a bunch, and I think a lot of it's the striper. There's an abundance of striper. Like if I could spin it around and show you side imaging right now, it there's striper all around us. But you're not. Are they usually catching striper on live shad, or what's what's the bait they're using for striper? I I believe so. I usually do. But I I've caught, caught one on cut shad uh, two days ago. And I, whenever I strap a fish on, on, I use cut bait every once in a while. That's why they to They more or less pick it up. It seems like they pick it up, run with it, and then just immediately let it go. I'll hook it. No. Okay. Well, we'll jump to the next boat, see that rig, and then we'll bring you all back in here in a minute. All righty. All right, cat nappers, can you show us the uh, rig you guys are using? Um, I don't have anything. Yeah, we got one. You, we won't. It's uh, oh, we're just using it. demon dragons, demon dragons, and ten knots, and then most everything's got Brian's dragon master weights on them. And it looks like you're only dragging six rods. Eight. Oh, we you got, got two that are side. off the side here. You can't see. Okay. But yeah, we're pulling demon dragons with uh, ten knots, and then Brian's dragon master setups. One double rig. One double rig. So in small baits, are you kind of doing a mixture of baits too? Uh, we kind of got it mixed up right now, and mixed up between buffalo and shad. What's working for you today so far? Chad has this morning. So, do you but, think the bite is tough right now? And is there a reason it's tough? Is it just because it's it's not that transition of the cold weather has not really changed yet? And I don't know. We were we caught we caught a lot of good fish right through here yesterday, and we haven't caught anything good today. And we were catching everything on buffalo. Oh, on buffalo. Okay. But nothing today what do you think if if the conditions were perfect what do you think it would take on this lake and your five best fish um i you figure know, 100 about pounds? 100 i figure 120. oh wow so you must have had a good day yesterday then. we were we was hoping for that day today well it's only 10 o'clock and you know sometimes that, bite, sometimes that bite will turn on maybe I mean, they're here. They're just not eating. So where where are you both out of? What town? Um, he's from Navarra Mills and Valley Mills. Valley Mills, the other side of Waco, and I'm from Mineral Wells. 
So. I'm up by PK. So, up by PK. Do you fish? So PK is kind of your home lake? No. That place is not good to me. It's not good to you? What's your favorite body of water to fish? Um, Brownwood or Tawakini are my go tos. Brown. Okay. Well, hopefully we see you on the Twisted Cat Trail in a few events. We're working our way down uh, in that region, so we got some stuff still coming out. Yeah, I went to the the Keystone Lake with uh, me and Monty Bond came up there to that. Yep, that was a good a good event. I mean, it was we, the fishing wasn't amazing, but it was a good fun, you know. Yeah, event. that was a good time. Yeah, we'll probably make some more of those next year. Okay, well, I'm going to get to the next boat, see what they got for a rig, and then we'll bring you all back in. Okay. All right, you guys got to wake up. Can you show us, show us the rigs you're using? Oh, I got them on. Sorry, my bad. My bad. You were on silent. Now, now we're back. Okay. Uh, we're just using a simple. We're just using a simple Santee Cooper rig with a three ounce egg sinker, and uh, bite me float on it. And a couple demon dragons. A couple demon dragons mixed in, and uh, mostly seven and eight aught rip and lip circle hooks. That's your friends. Emerson, I've heard Emerson good hooks. <clears throat> I like them. It looks like the wind's blowing to the bank, and you guys are kind of fishing that. We're fishing a grass wind blowing bank. This lake has come up about, what, about six and a half feet in two weeks? Yeah. So we're fishing water that was dry, or land that was dry two weeks. So now all you need is a little bit of sun. A little bit. No, it sure hill. Yep. We so, how many it. fish do you guys have in the boat? We have zero right now. We still have skunk in, and we've been anywhere from about 50 foot, 50 foot all the way to, to one. one foot today. Well, it's still early. It's only 10 o'clock. Exactly. Yep. We're not done yet. Well, the good thing is you can catch one five pounder and be ahead of two of the teams already. <clears throat> That's good to know. How about the other 50? Okay, yeah. we'll keep after. I'm going to try to bring everybody in here and we'll see if anybody. Can. It's I'll, not It's I'll, not over. You got to go all the way to the end. Exactly. We're going to give this another maybe, what, 10, 15 minutes, and then we're going to make another move, go try something different. All right, let's bring everybody in and see how anybody else is doing. Yeah. All hey, right. Brian. Brian. Yes. Brian, you're being called out. I don't know if you can see this. Does this look familiar? Yes, it does. That's, That's the. That's one of the original uh, original dragon, dragon plates. The homemade version. I made uh, six of them back in December of last year, and I still have all six of them in the boat. <laughs> wow. Jay, what are you laughing about so much? <laughs> The uh, Chuck E. Cheese for informing me we're going to Chuck E. Cheese for her birthday, so I thought it was already planned. And then I guess us all talking about it, we all just assumed it was already planned by somebody else. We realized she didn't even ask; she's just telling us. Pizza. Oh wow! Pizza. Pizza. Chuck E. Cheese. When's the birthday? December 11th. <laughs> On December 11th. On December 11th, how are you going to be? What? Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to be? 
Seven. Seven years old. You like going fishing? Yeah. And deer hunting. And even deer hunting. We got our own deer stand with like a $30 gaming chair. Oh, nice. That's pretty impressive. She's spoiled rotten. Hey, hey, there's somebody else sleeping now, huh? Uh. Let's see what they got. Let's bring them up full. See if they got a big one. <laughs> Donald Moore, <clears throat> Courtney, let's see a good net job because Donald Moore is watching and he needs all the teaching he can get. <laughs> He's a good half mile out there. Yeah, Donald would have already lost the net in the water by now. <laughs> There's another. What are we eating right now? There's plenty of small ones. That's sure. You're snacking, aren't you? Hey, that's a bigger fish. They're kidding. Somewhat bigger. There's the rig. Now that we have one. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's the 12 aught. Yeah. Glow in the dark demon dragon. And then this is the regular uh, backwoods. Yeah, backwoods catfishing. Do you think it's the rattler, the rattling today? Well, it looks like that bait's been chewed up a little bit. Oh. Lock that long board out. And then the next one. Yeah, disengage that one. Mommy's cooking this stuff. What are you doing, girl? Always eating. I was going to say, she has all kinds of snacks. I have sunflower seeds, too. I've seen those. They were rich, weren't they? Oh, yeah. That your favorite? We might even throw one of them on a hook and see if that helps catch some bigger fish. What do you think about that? Hey, I've tried beef jerky before. Has it worked? No. <laughs> oh, let's see. Like, let's see. Brian's snacking too. Ew. Ew. Brian, what are you snacking on? Garlic beef jerky. Hey, it's always good to have beef jerky in the boat. Uh -huh. You're not using it for bait, are you? Garlic beef jerky. No, I'm here. Garlic from Bucky's is good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We lost Hogan again. I think he's sleeping. Is that a uh, Bucky's Alex over there? Is it what? No, is it? I thought it was Alex, one of the tournament directors coming by. He was watching the live feed when it started, so it might be him. I thought maybe he'd come up here and get in front of us. Yeah. They're way up there in Alex's country.
Hey, that's fine. Oh, A lot of movement going on. Are you making a move? Yeah, we're going to make a run. They're pulling a JT Ray, ready to move. You guys, cat nappers, you guys making a move or you got a little uh, one on? Got a little one on and we're making a move. Is that make number five in the boat? Do what? Let's, let's see that big fish. Did you already put them in? Big one. Does that make number five? Uh, three. Number three. Two more, and then you can start hog hunting. Yeah. That's what Coy always says. He says, once we get a limit, we're going to start hog hunting. <laughs> There's bronze dragon weight with the demon dragon on the end of it. So do you vary that? So your your leader off that dragon weight. Will you vary that length sometimes? Yes. You think that matters depending if they're suspended more or whatever. Yeah, we've got some pretty long getting up there, and then we're dragging some in the mud. Never remember his Oh, you got a dog on the boat too. I got like That's, captain. That's, the best one I'm That's the captain. I like it. All right, we'll let you guys reel in and head to your next spot, and then we'll bring you back on. Yes, sir. We're actually just got on the line. So now you, Liz you woke up. Huh? Liz woke up. I did wake up. Finally. <laughs> got a couple of teams. We got two teams moving now. We got teams JT in? <laughs> yeah, Dillard finally woke up. Them guys have been in the same spot all morning, but I think that they fell asleep and didn't realize it. So, Alex, Looks are you cold on? though out there. Hey, Alex. Yes, sir. So, this tournament I think had 54 boats in it. Yeah. Do you anticipate you uh, Twisted Cats coming to Texas at all? We're working on it. We're going to be really close to Texas for sure. Yeah. 
you know, we're, we're have we're gonna have more lake tournaments this year than we've ever had. We're you know starting uh, New Year's Eve weekend like the Ozarks. That's gonna be an awesome event. And then February third, Grove, Oklahoma, Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Uh, March will be on the Mississippi, Missouri, and Illinois, where the confluences where it all comes together. That'll be a big fish way in uh, in Alton, Illinois. We're still finishing up. April's going to be exciting. Hopefully, we announce that Monday. And then May 4th, we're going to go to Milford Lake. So, talking to some of my buddies that fish up there a lot and guide, they say, if I said, if you guys could pick one weekend to fish Milford, what would it be? And they all said the first weekend of May. So, so, uh, so with all these lakes, guys like Donald Moore and Charles Blair, they'll kind of be eliminated. <laughs> yeah, you know, Donald called me last night on the way home, and he was he was really concerned about where we're going to go in April and a couple other events. And he said, "I just don't know that I can t I can do these lakes." He's like, "I'm a river guy," and I told him, "You just gotta, you know, you gotta hit some of these lakes. It'll make you a better angler, and you know, stay after it." And, I don't know that we'll see Charles much in 24 either. Don James said it best. He said, if you want to be a good angler, you got to be able to fish anywhere. Well, to be honest, if you look at it like this, you take who won, who was the angler of the year for Twisted Cat last year? John and Kevin. And if you look at where they finished throughout the year, they finished good on lakes and rivers, and then they went to a lake and won that tournament. So they were – you know, they can kind of put everything together, and that's important. You know, to be the best of the best and to be a consistent angler, you know, that's what it takes. I mean, you can't just fish lakes and then expect to go do good on the river or just fish rivers and expect to do good on the lakes. So um, I'm excited. Next year is going to be a completely different year. It's going to put a lot of people, they're going to have to really think outside the box on these tournaments, you know, especially with some bigger turnouts. Lake of the Ozarks will be a lot of fish caught. Um, I suspect somebody will probably be in the 100 pounds, and that's going to be a two over three under with a slot of 26 to 32, 26 to 34. So no fish in that slot. That two over. So I think I, it'll be a lot of fish caught. I mean, some people will probably catch 50 fish every day. So, and then the so amenities Donald, of that make them awesome too. So Donald, one trick pony more might be a little hurt next year at Twisted Cat Point Trace. Yeah, I think they're going to struggle a little bit, but Donald has got one week of vacation left, and he is using it leaving next week for seven days straight on Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, wow. We got to pull this up and see what these – hold on. Dillard and Hogan are doing some crazy stuff. Let's get them on. What are these guys doing? They might – Brian, you might have to go pull these guys out later. Yeah, there's some in September. Oh, wow. His prop looks like. I can't. Yeah. You guys got to send us a picture of your prop tomorrow when you get done. Uh, Sorry, I had you on mute. What did you say? I said, we still got the motor trimmed all the way down. We good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I, it is trimmed all the way down. We're in We're in three foot, and we hadn't gotten quite travel enough yet. That's what it is. Trimmed all the way down on the Trinity. <laughs> wow. Brian knows I always fish like this. Yeah, yeah you're not. Yep. That's yeah. Hey, Jerry, did you have the, the motor trimmed all the way down on the Trinity River? <laughs> uh, not all the way down. <laughs> We're, we're Tell us a little for bit about track. that. I didn't hear that. Huh? I think Brian probably knows what I mean. <laughs> so you guys must be running way up in some shallow stuff. What's that? So you're running up into some shallows. So you think that the fish, even with the being cloudy, the fish are up in the shallows? Uh, we're, trying to, we're trying. We're trying to see if we can find some. 
We can't get shallow enough. We're still on three and a half foot. Wow, it looks like you're about to beach the boat. Nah, we can't get as shallow as we want to because of the flooded draft. Oh, hold on. There's... I'm just waiting for that motor to just stop. Oh, there's no paint left on the jig. How's the prop look? That's what I really want to know. It's almost brand new. <laughs> what's your I guess you do got a jack plate up. Shay wants to know what your look looks like. What's that? Shay's asking what the old old uh, prop look like. It doesn't look good. Like the dog chewed it up. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get in those spots. We try to get where nobody else can. What do you think? All right, boys, we're gonna run. We're gonna you know, we're gonna jump off here. We'll probably be back in a little while. All righty. Good luck. We'll Good see you back. soon. All right, Cat and are still making a run too. They got the twins. They got heater. I think I've seen an AC on the side of their little window. Yeah, if I get, if I get close enough, I'll turn the camera. Close. Brian, you still got some wind. When I mute you, it sounds perfect, but I don't know. Where that wind's coming from. JT, we got two boats making a run for it. We're going to see if it pays off like it did you. Well, Charles was talking a lot of smack, and obviously he does that on the internet, but. Uh, he said you guys don't like to fish the rivers and, and get mopped up every time. We love fishing the rivers. Ask Charles how good he's done in his backyard all year. Well, we all know that answer. Looks like catnappers are making a good run. Shay, did you hear him talk yesterday? Did you, Shay, did you hear him talk yesterday? Uh, catnappers said that they were fishing this the same channel edge, and they were into some good fish. Yeah, I just can't give them a bite today. No, we pre-fished. I pre-fished next on two days. They're uh, they didn't run very far. They're not going very fast. They're right now probably a quarter of a mile in front of me. I, that's, I think bouncing around the different cuts. That's yeah, a they're, lot of water. Fish. They're, they're definitely sucked into the mud bad. You're barely marking them at all. And they're Ever. spread out. You can't you can't find like a big school of them together. No. The tiny ones, yeah. Yeah. The, the babies are moving. All right, two days ago, I had one 30-pounder five minutes into the drift and then didn't catch another fish. I just kept drifting the ledge, just to cover ground. I was by myself being lazy. Drifted for three hours and caught one more, like three hours after the first one. It's just they're scattered all over. Yeah, you know what's fun about tournament fishing is we're going to find out at the end of the day where they were at, who was on them. Yeah. And it could, it could be, you know, just like uh, Washita. You know, we went there, and and Charles Blair and Donald and Donnie Moore, they had a sixty-five pound blue cat on Friday, and they thought they kind of got into them. But I think it was just one of them fluke bites, you know, pre-fishing. Um, 
I want to go back down there. I know that lake has got a lot of big fish. We just didn't catch it at the right time. And it seems like this lake's the same too. It seems like it could be good, but you know, the falls, if, depending on how you hit it in the fall, you just never know. Yeah. My favorite time in Texas is December and January by far, but November can be lights out at the same time. It's the local, we locals two days ago, they said jug lining, but uh, they had said here for the past week, it's been horrible here. So what is, I guess, tell me again where you guys are from. Tell us where like your home lake is. Really, I don't, I don't guess you'd say I have, I'm, I'm an hour and a half from Texoma. I live in Bowie. It's halfway between uh, Fort Worth and Wichita Falls. Hour and a half from Texoma. I'm an hour from Arrowhead. I'm an hour and a half from PK. I'm two and a half hours from here. So I've got to travel regardless where I go. My, uh, the lo closest lake to me doesn't have blue cats. It only has channel cats and flatheads. We call it our bait lake. Yeah. But you can get bait there though pretty easy? Yeah. Most days. They, they're in a, it's like a big herd there. You'd, when you find them, they're thick, but you just got to go all yeah. over. So what's your, I, I have a five you you like? that I keep, keep full. I usually keep three or 400 in. So whenever I run oh, guide trips, nice. run guide trips, I just dip them out in the morning. I know a lot of people have been going to those tanks, having a tank for that. It's nice once you figure out how to make it work because I did it homemade but it, it, it yeah, is I've got a yeah, across from my property we have a because I'm right on the Mississippi River we have a natural spring that runs all I mean all the time a lot of water so I'm going to try to put a tank through that spring where it's always got fresh water I mean it would refresh the water every two minutes I think little bite were you looking at the planter board or the rod tip planter board it instantly took off in. You can see the rod tip start to flicker about the time you let it go. Have you ever caught a big striper thinking it was a big blue? Yes. I fought I, I fought it for 10 seconds and whenever it started circling the boat, it was oh we got one. We got one. No. <laughs> Eight pound striper. So what about what's your guys' is uh Favorite place to fish. What's my what? What's your favorite place to fish? Probably Courtney loves Alabama it's by far. Favorite. The and in, in my opinion, and it might make some people mad, that it's probably the easiest place to go to catch giants with like Gunnersville and stuff. If you hit it right, I've never seen so many big fish caught as like the Catmaster Classic two or three years ago. It's just. There were, certain, there were some teams catching like six fish over 60 pounds a day all week long. And a mix of blues and flatheads. I think it's cool to weigh in both. Yeah. My favorite is the Mississippi River. After catching a couple fish over 60 pounds bumping, it's I'm hooked. And you guys are great on the Mississippi, too. You know, you always do well. We're working our way well, up. Slowly, we're... Consistently between twelfth and tenth place, it seems like. Yeah, as long as you consistently stay a few places behind us, I'm completely yeah. cool with that. <laughs> Hard to have twenty dollar bills. It's like we're in the same vicinity of each other. Not every time, but for the most part, we figure it out, and you're pretty close. So yeah, we all like to go. Somewhere. We like to go far too. Two years ago, yeah. we thought we went far enough. Where we wouldn't see nobody halfway through the drive, see y'all coming. I say, oh, we're probably going. To sure enough. Yeah, I love the Mississippi River. It's but expensive. I like the lakes too. It is. It is. I mean, it, you know, for so like for us to go to Helena, let me look it up. Because I'm, we're in West Central Illinois, right on the Mississippi. Actually, the last place you can catch blues. But for for me to drive to Helena is 509 miles, 7 hours, and 45 minutes. So that's how yeah. far Helena is from me. It, it takes, 
Seven and a half. Seven and a half. We're seven and a half hours. So we're both about the same drive to Helena. Yeah. But you don't have to go through Little Rock. Yeah. <laughs> I try not oh, to. I Little Rock is probably the worst city I ever drive through going anywhere. We just went through Little Rock going to Washita. Yeah, I've had my trailer tongue snap in half there. I've had three blowouts there. I've caught a concrete barrier there. Oh my, that's what I'm always scared about. We were I was pulling the the twisted cat trailer and there were some barricades. I mean, we had a semi next to us. You had <laughs> inches. Yeah. He was trying to pass it and we're running like 70. And I'm like, this is this might not end well. We're gonna be doing some skinny rubbing and racing here soon. <laughs> I mean, Skinny would have loved it, but no, nah, it wasn't for me. I'm like, we're gonna rub some, rub this awning right off the trailer. Yeah. Those concrete bears the whole way are just solid black on the bottom. Should... I know. And they've been doing construction in Little Rock is, I mean, is, I mean, for ten plus years at least. I don't, I don't and understand. It's not like it's gotten any better either? They might as well quit. I don't know what their end goal is. <laughs> I think just to continue doing construction. Yeah. We and was fortunate. It really hard. To we was fortunate when I snapped that trailer. So we was like eight miles of the concrete barriers on both sides, and I was about three hundred yards out of the concrete barriers when it broke. Yeah. If it would have broken, it doesn't matter. I would have shut it down all the way to Texarkana. Yeah, you're lucky. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're going north or south through Little Rock or east or west. I mean, when you come into Little Rock, you're ten and two on a steering wheel, and you're just like. No, oh, yeah, you can't take that breath until you get through Little Rock, and you're like, okay, I'm a, we made it. You're puckered the whole time. Where's Memphis? Oh, y'all are right. though. that one south of Little Rock on 30 is treacherous, <laughs> but it is, yeah, barrel through it. <laughs> It's like cat nappers are back on the scene. Got some bait in the water. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, Kenny, hold on. He jerked it, pulled out of its mouth. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. You can have to put it. You can have to tie him to that. Here we go. Here we go. Now we get the real skinny. You can have to tie him to the chair so he doesn't jump. But that was fast, so skinny. I mean, Coy couldn't even take a step when you were on the rod. So that was fast. That was fast. <laughs> oh, my. Ooh, Catnapper's throwing some special bait on it, looks like. Look at that little fillet right there. <coughs> Yeah, we're casting out right there. Nice. They got the captain in the back of the boat, too, it looks like. Making sure everything's going to be good. Making sure there's no bird's nest. <coughs> so the bait's probably off that then, isn't it, Skinny? Do what? Oh, that was the headpiece. Let's see yeah, that. Let's, cool. Let's see if there's a bite on it. It was hung up. Oh, it was hung up. I didn't say anything. No, it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I just wanted to. It wasn't hung up. Joe was hung up. It wasn't hung up. Oh, shit. You might take my head Uh oh, they got somebody driving close to the boards. I thought he was fixing with the planer board. He thought he's gonna slip up. I thought the boat was gonna take off with my board. So are you as as all of you are dragging, are you staying, you know, looking at the sonar five cannons, these cannon fit? Yes, I've I'm marked different colored dots for different things, but as we go for certain spots, if you first bait with fish underneath them, I'll 
give them like a green dot and then maybe towards like halfway through the day, if you can figure out somewhat of a pattern, oh, they're in this range, try drifting through that. But I'm yeah. constantly going back and forth through it. I am keeping an eye on side imaging to see if we're fixing to get into a cluster of trees. Will you, will you drag all day or do you think it's going to be a time where you need to set up an anchor on some structure? Or? If I don't, I really think it's, I'm not counting it out by no means. I have, I caught one fish anchored this week, but, or I say this week in the past day, but uh we will pr we'll, more than likely we'll drift it seems seems like it's worked better we didn't get to pre-fish it long enough to figure i'd like to come back to this lake just to fun fish or fish over and over to get an idea for it but it's anytime you get close to the channel it don't matter if you're in 50 foot or 20 foot there, there's trees on the ledges and then once yeah. you get up it's not like you can just take off running I need to have Devin lives on this lake. I need to have him take me out here and go in that no foot of water. I wonder if that's why they shut the camera down. Uh huh. <laughs> but I don't think when we talked to him before they got off, I don't think he had a fish in the boat. He said he didn't. And he was sleeping. If anybody, yeah, when I brought him, on, he was sleeping. He might have had a rough night last night. <laughs> as long as it took them to get their food and stuff they were probably up there till midnight I'd like to go with somebody because I'll fish shallow but I've never fished over and over and over in that one foot of water I've talked to him a couple times and he he loves whenever you can pretty much see like their fin whenever they take off they were the axe out of the water pretty much and he he does good with it aside from toledo bend i've never done consistently done good with it that was cool it is the funnest though i will say that for lake fishing yeah but so have you ever fished the missouri river i never have Oh my, you got to put that on your, you, you need to, if you guys get a chance, it's worth coming up to the Missouri river, like in the, like in central Missouri to fish the winter bite, because the Missouri river is kind of like, I don't know if I want to say dumbed down Mississippi river, but there's a lot of dikes with shallow water behind it. And the, when it's on, it is on. And, uh, you know, I was talking to an angler, actually Scott Linton the other day, he does some guiding. And that was my question on the shallow water stuff because I'm not used to the shallow water. Is like when you guys are in that shallow water, will you take, will you use your trolling motor only? Do you think the big motor scares those fish? What's your thoughts on that? Or what do you think Devin does? I, I've done both. I've, I have ran trolling motor when using live scope and perspective view. And that's I actually, I think this is Devin right here, matter of fact. But, uh, mm -hmm. Using perspective view, it you you can definitely tell whenever you get close. They they take off. And I don't so know they had to go through all that. Stuff. Do what? Well, they were going through a bunch of shallow stuff, and now they're out by you. Did they turn? To, is that where they were so far up there, or they're coming back and decided not to do where they were going? I I bet they was down down in the river. We're at mid, pretty much mid lake. So I don't, he didn't catch any shallow. He might not see anything he likes or he knows another cove. There's, there's lots of co coves with creeks here. I have seen that. Charlie's talking smack on there and on my phone. Text me. But if you ever get Boy, a Brian, perspective view of live scope in shallow water, you've got to try it. Yeah, I'm looking at, uh, so I just went, I've had Lawrence since on my, on my 2019 ProCat 240. And then this year when I got the 2.0 Dynasty, I uh, went all GPS Garmin, and I really love it. And I'm looking to get the new Kraken that has the transducer, where you can run the transducer wire through 
on the Garmin. I've not had live scope. I've actually not even been on a boat that had live scope. So pretty interested to get that. But it's real. I, I bet it pays just in passive. I think just, yeah, I mean, just especially like in a lot of the bait that I get, you know, knowing what's in front of me and not kind of throwing for ghost or, you know, throwing 10 times, I can throw once. You know, a lot of the places there's bait in 10 different spots, you know, where I go, but if I can narrow that down to one, that's going to save a ton of time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brian and Coy, we got yes. a match. Charlie just doesn't stop. I don't know. Uh, Charles is probably still laid up in the fart sack. <laughs> I guarantee he's in bed right now. I guarantee he's laying in bed. Oh, I know he is. Is he talking smack? He's just, he's been hang. he's something about being hanging around Koi too much, and then he done pulled a Koi and pulled the hook out, and he's betting $500. Koi gets mopped today. Oh. <laughs> Richard Strip says live scope is excellent for getting bait. So, who all so far has live scope on your boat today? Do what? Catnappers got live. Hey, Catnappers, I don't know if you guys, I can't unmute you. I don't know if you have your phone muted. So, a lot of times, Shay, do you Alex, have when, yes. Hey, Alex, a lot of times, if we can't hear them talking, they'll have to refresh their page and re enter. Because if you get a text message or a call, it'll you'll be able to hear your sound, but you can't hear us. Yeah, Catnappers, I think you're going to have to go out and come back in because it's, I can't unmute you for some reason. Steve, can you guys hear me? Okay, right. I just we just can't hear you. So usually I can unmute and mute people, but I can't with you guys. JT's got live scope. Live scope probably don't work too good at fifty miles an hour though. Still moving it. Huh. I got it on my boat. Can you hear us now? Yep. yep. Sounds good now. So everybody here has got live scope then. I don't. I mean, I have Ryan, do you think? Scope. Oh, you don't have live scope. I don't have live. I mean, I have live scope. I just don't have it on this boat. We're actually watching okay, right now. Let's pull this up. Catnapper's got it. We're actually just watching so it. What are we drifting. looking at here? Uh, we're just watching to see if we see any of these big fish on the bottom as we're drifting and just watching the bait. And just so kind of explain, that, explain that, how that works. So it's, it's looking 40 foot, kind of go over how that, because I have no idea what I'm looking at here. Yeah, I'm on, so like right there, 60 foot forward, 40 foot down, the boats, the boats right here, and then we're looking forward okay. as we're drifting to it. Um, there was a bunch of bait. It's we about went over it all. There's one little pod of some little stuff right there. Oh, that, that's and, a pod right there that's moving. Uh, that's a yes. pod of shad. You'd say? Yes. That's awesome. And then there was some big shad down on the bottom. There comes some more down low. And then so what is the line in the middle right like there? Is that that's not the bottom, is it? Yeah. The, Oh, so that's the bottom, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's that's another bait ball. Right. So there's a lot of bait balls, kind of, or not a lot, but they're starting to show up. That's, that is impressive. I've never seen that before. Yeah, there's some just a steady bait balls going by. So are you kind of looking as you're – I mean, you use this, like this is a tool while you're dragging just to see if you got fish in front of it. You might see like a bait ball and maybe some fish below it. Yeah, and I, can you – I'm not for sure if you can see these bigger baits down here at the bottom right now. Yeah, yeah. What do you think that is? Just big shad? Or? Probably big shad. That is incredible. But, What's the cone little thing on the right, on the top by the 60? Uh, that is tells it? me which way it's pointing off the nose of my boat. Okay. So you can change the forward range and the down range. That's impressive. Yeah, I can go to perspective in shallow mode, or I can look straight down and rock. This here is just looking forward. 
And there's like like all this right here. That's some big, probably some big baits or on the bottom right there. Wow. So do you you definitely probably use it to catch bait? Uh, that's really all it's for. We just do this when there's nothing else to do, waiting to get a bite. Oh, I'm gonna have to look into getting this live scope stuff. I've never, like I said, I've I've heard people talk about it. Everybody loves it, especially I, you know, and they, there's controversy in the catfish world, or not the catfish world, but you know the bass world about, um, you know, should it be allowed in the crappie world and so on. But I don't know that the catfish world. Brian, I don't know if you can hear me. I can. Brian, are you? I don't know what your thoughts are. You know, in the crappie world, it's a big, there's a lot of controversy about, you know, should it be allowed, should it not be allowed. I can foresee that helping the catfish world right now besides for getting bait. I don't know that it helps. I don't know. I, I, I've kind of still followed the bass world, but, you know, years of fishing in the bass tournaments and, you know, when I first started fishing, I had the, the X-15 Lawrence paper graph. And then <laughs> when they transitioned into those screens we have now, people were griping about that. And, you know, it's been a constant upgrade in technology. And it seems like as it does, there's always somebody going to whine about the technology not fishing or But But uh, no, I, I like seeing the live scope you see all these trophy bass being caught in texas in the last two to three years it's breaking records and it's due to live scope uh, i do believe that in the crappie world we'll probably see more regulations as far as limits on lakes because now that people get used to live scoping you know it may take all day to catch 25 fish your limit but now it goes out and you're sure 25 fish in a couple of hours a lot of times with live scope so there's a lot more fish being caught with live scope but i'm not against it yeah well that's the first time i've honestly seen it like that firsthand that's the cat after the show that's pretty sweet so i'm gonna have to look into it. it always just looks so like in depth i didn't know if it's something to mess with but i think it's gonna help for me for sure in my area i think it's a matter of time for you know some guys figure out especially on the mississippi river how to use live scope targeting large fish active fish i used it in the mississippi this year How'd that work? Do you see it, do you see a it, future? Really, really dirty. But for down rods, I could see if he was on going through brush, you, you can see the brush coming up 50 foot ahead of you. So you could actually reel up to where your you can see where your weight and bait is to try to go right at the top of it if you see fish on it. Couldn't see when you get in swirl holes and stuff. You you could see lots and lots of fish down at the bottom, and it's unreal how many fish will actually swim up to your bait and then just turn around and go back down. We've, we've watched several fish hanging rods off the side, swim up to it and swim away. Yeah. I quit. I don't, I don't know if it affects catfish or not. I, I, it seems like on my leg that I got on sitting in the spot lock, catching them over and over and over, even on down rods, and I've turned it on a couple times. And that it, I don't know if it's the way the ping is or something. In my mind, it's like it messes with the catfish. It's happened to me. I've only live scoped one catfish. And it was in 50 foot. But other than that, it seems, and it might have just been the way it fell. I don't know. But it seems like it affected them. You know, there is a guy actually – I have to find that, but somebody was catching catfish in a lake. Um, now, they were small catfish, but he was catching a lot of catfish in some lake in Kansas. But I think, and I'm, that's the thing a lot of people talk about too is, you know, I have, I have people that they'll turn their sonars off when they're fishing, even when they're bumping. But they think that even that sonar on affects them, which I disagree just because, I mean, I, I like the loud stereo. And I mean, I've caught a lot of big fish 
with my stereo cranked, even on Wheeler at night, dragging, you know, in 30 foot of water with the subs bumping and still catching fish. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Everybody's got their own technique, and that's, you know, as long as they're, that's what they believe in, that's what works. We're missing our music today, huh? <laughs> Do you guys play a lot of music or? Oh yeah, we're always jamming. Nice. What kind of music? Everything. You think the so do you think music affects the fish? No. Not at all. Well, I mean, if you turn it up loud enough, it makes them bite, right? I'm telling you, man, I can thank my music. Kenny, what do you got to say? I think sometimes it could. If you're fishing one foot of water and no wind and uh, playing some Snoop Dogg, no, I might scare them away. I agree 100%. The year, the year that uh, Seth McAllister and I got third at the Sea Arc tournament, uh, we were kind of throwing Hail Marys. We had a good bag, and we were playing some, like, 90 – hardcore like juvenile and snoop dog and i had it cranked we were just throwing giant baits and then at one o'clock just got smoked by a 73 um and that was in 30 foot of water i was fishing with georgia jr and skinny on the mississippi river and the bite got kind of slow, and George asked me to turn the stereo on. I asked him what he wanted to hear, and he said, I want to listen to George Jones. And, you know, we put some George Jones, cranked it up, and I caught my PB about five minutes later. Wow. Yeah, what genre look they like? I'll be honest, I mean, I, I listen to it all country, some rock mainly country and some hip hop, but uh, they bite good on the hip hop. I don't know what it is, especially the, the like the nineties hip hop. I think we were playing, I got five on it when we got that 73. Oh my. What's Koi doing? Has he got hung up or he's changed some fresh bait or? Oh. Got a snag. Your sister's not getting the response out of us that she wants on Facebook Live, so now she's texting. Courtney's getting the net again. Yes, Courtney. I think the only boat that's caught fish on here is the Kitty Kitty Guide Service. I think they got something in their bank. Yeah. There's yeah. giant. Shay, that was an incredible fast bond retrieval right there. We're gonna have to do a screen record and come back and, and replay some of these bloopers. So far, I need to get a tally count on here. So far, 17 missed fish between the three boats on. <laughs> and Koi's, Koi's got 14 of them. <laughs> oh, my. Let's see, strike the guys. Will bang on the bottom of the boat with a padded. Is this true? Richard yes, says, Striker so guys will bang on the bottom of the boat with a padded oar. It actually called coming and has been yeah, proven yeah, successful. So we went through we went through a group of striper guides this morning, and one of them had a trolling motor on the back with a half in the water splash, and one of them had a uh, looked like a fiberglass rod spanking the water with it. Um, some of them will say, What did you guys, I mean. Foot. If I came up on that, I would be thinking that there there's something wrong with them. I'd ha I'd be worried about them. Right. Like they've been out there too long or something. If they're hitting the side of the boat and stomping. Yeah. I have a splasher for mine, and it has night and day different. 
how, how good it worked. Really? For That's strapper. what Richard just said. The striper slapper. Well, yeah. they have. What are those things for the catfish? Don't they got the, what, where you hit the side of the boat or the water? Uh, they have something in Europe that they use for those wells catfish. So after today, what's your uh, what's your guys' next events if you're fishing? Lake of the Ozarks. So you're not fishing until Lake of the Ozarks? Nope. You know, I just uh, started watching that Ozark series on TV, and I can't wait to get to Lake of the Ozarks now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the lake's uh, a cool place. It really is. I fished uh, oh. Lake Ozarks about yeah. four years ago yeah, you when I bought a boat from yeah. Dave. Yeah. Does Coy got a big one on, or what's going on here? I think he's pulling in a tree. pulling a tree, tree fish. Got a good bend on it. Ooh, looks like Courtney's about ready. Wow. Wow. Had to cross one that I can hang on. What happened to Jerry Dillard? I don't know if they made a move or what. Did you say earlier they didn't have a fish in the boat? No, that was, yeah, yes, yes, they didn't. Jerry didn't, yeah. But now they disappeared. They've been running like JT. Here's Cat after the back. Phone died. Oh. How's the heater treating you? Uh, it's not on now. But it's Easy, good. skinny. What do you got going on there, Brian? Um, um, we bought the stump field. We're bringing, stump in, we're bringing in another tree. Oh, my. Looks like the sun might pop out. I don't think that was on the <laughs> And broke these out. Oh yeah, you think that might change the bite? Guaranteed. If you're, I was trying, you know, it, when that sun comes out, a lot of times that. 
shallow bot might turn on. Yeah, we're in some stumps. All right, cat nappers, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Can you flip your screen around? Show us your good side. Ooh, Brian, you are getting some sun. Yeah. No. That could change everything. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. Have you seen that happen where the sun came out and it really changed the bite? Nakedish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's very true. Second day. There, that's beautiful. You know, I don't know if you remember that, but the forecast that day was the sun was supposed to come out at one o'clock. We caught good fish. I think both teams, y'all did too, all day on Friday. And then we had clouds move in on Saturday with the forecast showed the sun to pop out at one well the bite was terrible and we couldn't wait for that sun to pop out and it was slightly turned to light i mean it was it was on sun yeah. popped out five minutes fish in the boat one right after another i'm not going to say what depth of water we we moved to when it happened because that's what we're fixing to do All right, looks like everybody's. I'm gonna I'm gonna run down and get a quick cup of coffee, and I'll be right back. Hopefully, when I come back, somebody's catching a fish. I'm changing It's been on there for two hours. going on guys y'all pretty quiet 
Being covered by like bumper boat. <laughs> I guess did we Mine's lose bigger. John and Jerry? And Devin? Hey, if you hang his boards over here when we go by, you just cut his lines, okay? We'll take it. Out. Anybody got a fish yet? No, change the bait. Not yet. More Texas tournaments, Jeremy Robinson said. Jeremy, if we can get some support as we're growing west, I think we're going to see a couple Texas tournaments in 25. Looks like the sun's definitely out for everyone. It's coming out. It's trying to. Brian or Shay, are you guys using uh, drift socks at all? No, I've yeah. got the paddles on my power pole. We have one drift oh, so sock out. Oh, in the power poles. Yeah. So I, I see catnappers have their drift sock right in the middle. Here, I'll flip this around and let you see cutters. Crappie house. Oh, there. Do what? I don't know if you can zoom or not. <laughs> wow.
So is everybody dragging against the wind or into the wind? I'm going against. We're going with it this time. We're going with We've been, it, We've been going against it all morning, and we just scooted over and went the other way this time. Oh, whoa, hold on here. Hold on. We got a good – we got. We might have a good one on here. She's got one now. Courtney, I can guarantee you one thing. That fish is up. <laughs> Here, kitty kitty guide service. We got a new net man. Donald Moore is watching. Oh, you better not miss it with a net, net man. Fire and... Yeah, net man is the most important job. Oh, he handed it off. I don't know if that was a good handoff or not, giving that to Shay. I mean, he can't miss it with that net. I'm pretty sure I'd fit in that thing. Oh, that looks like a good splash. Let's see. Come on. Oh, my. Look at the bend. Oh, oh. Wait. Let's see. Oh, my. That's a good blue right there. Awesome job. How did you guys get that reeled in and not get any other lines tangled up? Yeah. Um, I thought he was a proper. He's circle three planter Wow. Good hook set. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, the roof is mount. What do you think that fish weighs? That's a good fish. He might took thirty. Give us a good view of that thing. We're past him right now. I said 28. Yeah, won't go 30. <laughs> oh, that's a good looking fish right there. They won't let us see in the rest of the live well. I could have five of them in there. Oh, we're gonna throw one back. You guys got a limit. Woo -hoo. Brian, is, Brian, does that make you a little nervous? No. You think there's a chance we will have five of those? Making Brian nervous. He ain't got a fish all day. He's the best is yet to come. <laughs> still early. It's still 11.15. What time does this tournament get over? 3 o'clock. So you got to quit fishing at 3 or do you got to be back at 3? We got to quit fishing at 3. got to be back at 4.15. Oh, Skinny's ready. Oh! No. He can't get out of the rod holder. Skinny, you gotta quit scaring us like that. It's like we're measuring shades, getting some fish out, measuring them, weighing them. Oh, they got the scale out. What do you think?
you throwing back? Two, three pounds? Do what? What are you throwing back? A three pounder? Uh, three or four. Yeah. Three or four yeah. Courtney, you deserve a break now. You can sit down and let him kind of get the lines back out for you. That's them right there dragging, isn't it? Yeah. Catnappers got you. They know what you're doing. Coming in on their spot. It was, it was non-stop pecs and, and you guys gotta be more than there, cat nappers. Oh, you got that nice little heater. So Courtney, do you think that that fish was do you think it was smaller fish that was pecking at it and then the big fish came, or do you think that big fish was just kind of I think it was it? I think it was for pecking. On the, on the screen. It looked like it was a good bite. It looked like he was in the mud. Oh, I see both your boats now. What do you guys call his boat? The crappie house. The crappie house. <laughs> oh my. The crappie house is definitely the most comfortable right now. Yeah. Well, That's after this, way. after the sun comes, it feels pretty nice now. So look at that though. The sun comes out, bigger fish in the boat. Yep. That's getting Brian fired up. Right, Brian was right. The only thing that scares me with Brian's team is if they're going to go and they're going to pull a little too early on that rod and they're going to lose that fish again. Butter. Hey, what? Hey, Hutter, can you hear me? Yeah. How far out is your last planter board? <laughs> I don't know. It's way out there. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, 150 yards. 150 yards. Okay. About, about, three quarter, about three quarters of a small on the 7,000. He's using binoculars to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to reel that yeah, one he's got, he's got GPS trackers on his uh, planter boards. <laughs> We passed them about 10 minutes ago. We're just Wendell ran through my board yesterday and he said, I went 100 yards behind your boat. Yeah. But Brian, you're the only team so far that has not put a fish in the boat on live. We caught them all this morning. I had a dollar for every time I heard he caught them all this morning. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna I would I paid money to watch you guys pull him out of the live well. Look, here he is. Little little ducky. Hey, that's good luck. You wanna don't lose that rubber duck. I made sure he was healthy before we put them fish in there this morning. Just supposed so, to, just supposed to Brian, so let's talk about this call out that I did. It's, it's the first official call out I've ever done. And uh, that's going to be November 25th. 25th, Saturday, November 25th. 
And are we, is it just going to be one person on each? Oh, my. Is that a. We got another fish. Hold on. They just stuck another one, looks like. <laughs> Add another, I am impressed. Add another takedown. Add another takedown. Skinny's got a big tree. You're going to have to tie him down in a seat and quit letting him fish the boat down. It's, no, it's a, it's a stump. It's a fish in our eyes, Brian. It's always a fish. Ooh, Skinny's on the back deck. Okay, so Brian, so November 25th, November Red 25th, River. Nacogdoche, Louisiana. What's some of the rules? Um, all fish count. So we're going to use that one scale. We'll weigh all the fish on live, throw them back. So is, is it, we're just going to do a total weight? Total weight. That's what I think. I agree, because if we do most fish, I can't beat you. And I think we... You uh, a little fish, think, you're on them. You'll catch a hundred of them. I think we should make it a minimum of uh, five pounds. Anything under five is no problem. Uh, just, just me and you in the boat? Me and my uh, boat in your boat? Do what? Just two boats. I'm in mine, you're in yours. No partners. Correct. Correct. Or anybody else that wants to join in the challenge, bring your boat. I'm cool with that. We know Charles won't, but he wants in. No, Charles is coming. Well, I mean, the problem is he won't be able to get out of bed in time, so we don't have to worry about him. Yeah. Where is that one at on the 25th? The Red River? Many you just stay out of it. And then the winner, uh, the loser, buys dinner downtown Natchitoches Steak. The loser buys dinner downtown Natchitoches Steak. Yeah, I can't remember the name of that restaurant we ate at, uh, I believe, the last night. I think they had lobster. What was the, what was the name of those, uh, is it meat, meat pies? Oh, yeah. The meat pies. Okay. So, November 25th, Red River, Natchitoches, Brian versus Alex. Anybody else want to be a part of that? More than welcome to come. I mean, the, the, official, the official call out is between me and Brian. But if anybody else wants to try to be a part of that live, um, reach out to us and you know, get a couple boats down there. That'd be cool. It's a really fun fishery. Yeah. Especially that time of year. I mean, that's. Yeah. Alligators. Blue cat. It's, I would say, and I fished a lot of places. That's probably one of my favorite places to fish. Some of the meanest catfish in the country. Oh, my. Do you think you'll remember what we taught you since it's been two and a half years ago? Hey, Coy. <laughs> read my hat. For what we taught you? Can you see my hat? Find your own fish. Oh, I'm surprised lightning hasn't struck your house. You read that, Coy. You read it. I'm surprised lightning hasn't struck your house. 
No, that, when you did that live the other day, we were talking about Natchitoches and Charles was online in comments, really talking trash. And I don't know if you read my comment, but we sold Charles planer boards, taught him how to use them, got his bait, and told him where to go. Well, that story is not. We were on that boat, Alex. We were on that boat, Alex. I've been, I've been using planer board for nine years, so you well, have to teach know, him how to use it. I know you don't have to teach Jim how, though. That's the first time he's ever used planter board, circle hooks, and drug bait, as far as I'm concerned. I think so. Shane, Cordy, it'd be a good time if you guys want to join. Enter it's the Red River. November 25th, I, I did an official call out to Brian at the Red River Nacogdoches. So it's a, if you've not ever been on the Red River, it's an exceptional fishery. Probably my, and I fish a lot of places, probably my favorite place to fish. Your favorite lake is what? It's my favorite. Well, it's kind of a river and a lake, uh, the Red River. It's, it's I would okay. say it's my favorite place to fish. Uh, we're on minute. It's in Natchitoches. Oh. Natchitoches. Probably not that. How far would Natchitoches be for them, Brian? Uh, they're, they're probably an hour closer, so just probably around three and a half, four hours. Well, I don't know that I want them to come back for what I've seen them do today. Right. It's a great, the, the Red River and the Natchitoches area is a great dragon base. And also, you can also bump certain times of the year. And the food, everything, the atmosphere is great. The food is awesome. It's just a fun place to be. It's like, a, let me look that up. How far a drive that is. That'll, when we get there, it'll all, downtown will be decorated, all the Christmas lights, that, you know, the river. It's a great place. Day after things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That is 11 hours, and that's 12 hours, 742 miles from my house, uh, 12 hours. So, Brian, just remember that I'm calling you out, and I got a 12-hour drive, and you got a three-hour drive. Yeah, I remember. I'll remember. Four, I'm four and a half hours, actually. I don't say that. Still, I, I'm 12. And I'm going to put it to you. I'm ready. I can't wait. It's five hours and thirty minutes. Four hours and twenty minutes. You know what I you know I'd love to see Toy bring his boat. Ooh, is that a snag or skinny? I think it's bouncing off Who looks like Dillard and Hogan woke up? Let's see if they're uh Can you guys hear us? We hear you. You guys get up finally. You okay. guys are all over the place. Coming up shallow. Now you're looks like you're in the main lake. Yeah, Ooh, is that a bite? How many fish you got in the boat? Same amount we did when we last saw you. Zero. <laughs> We're still hey, at the same Jerry. amount as the last time. <laughs> hey Jerry. Yeah. The, the the people that bought your gator tracks are they fishing this tournament? Yes, they yeah. are. Okay. Yeah, they're right in front of me. So Jerry, did you did you guys see uh, the fish that Courtney caught? We did not. You don't. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. I'll tell you that. Another thing is they're the only team I've seen catch fish today. No, I'm wrong. Cat never brought one in. Okay. You saw both them catch fish. (laughs) 
Shay lost another good one though. I don't I think Courtney's gonna tie him in a seat. <laughs> I do best my best work from this seat. <laughs> don't worry about it, Jerry. Your five hundred and eighty dollars are looking good, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Who bought you, Shay? Cutter bought me. me Jerry. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's still laughing. Are you, are you coming through for us, Kenny? Don't worry about it, Jerry. All right. Skinny's at least lost 10 fish. So we we have a tally counter of how many hooks have been pulled out of fish's mouth. And it was 17 when you left. Now we're at 42, and Koi's got 38 of them. And a couple of tree stumps. Yeah, Koi caught the biggest stump I've ever seen. Does everybody have five except us? I think, uh, let me try to bring cat or uh, cat napper back. Cat nappers, can you hear us? Yeah, you guys don't have a limit, do you? Yet? No, four, three, three. What do you think of the fish that Courtney caught? That was a good one. We were right beside him. I, I knew, see, I knew to, I knew to buy Shay in that Calcutta because I knew it was going to come drag right beside me and then kick my tail. So, I mean, I couldn't go wrong. Now, nah, that's a smart buy. Real smart buy. All right, looks like we got a special guest coming in on the show, Brian. Let me guess. Huh? Who is it? You ready me to bring him on? Do it. Oh, it's Charles. It's Charles. I Charles. He's out of bed. He's out of bed. He's on the I'll see you in Natchitoches, Brian. <laughs> you, be, you be ready. Hey, you be uh, ready to buy me the biggest steak on their menu. I'll be ready, buddy. I, I mean, I, I you, you can tell him to talk all the trash you want in front of this audience, but we all know you won't be there. Hey, we're all going to remember this conversation here in a couple weeks. I mean, it's a solo deal. I mean, have you, have you ever put your boat in by yourself? <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> it's getting deep, isn't it, Charles? Yeah, now I can. Kevin helped me out with that. He showed me what to put on my bunks to get the boat off easy. Yeah, it's been getting deep. Now Corey's back there all shied up now that I'm on here. How'd that day go the other night, Charles? Hey, Skinny. You know, Brian brought you so you would actually put fish in the boat because Coy kept jerking the hooks out. I know. I know. We thought Coy had a good one earlier, but it was a stump. So, so since we're on live, I'll tell you, every tournament we fish together and every time I've been in the boat with Charles, I've caught more fish than him every time, and he can't say a word about it. God, he can't handle it. Coy. Coy just cannot handle it. He cannot oh, handle it. I'm gonna buy Coy a pacifier. It looks like is the sun going back down? Uh we still have, it's still cloudy out. It's just kind of cloudy. overcast. So I don't know, Charles, if you've seen it, but uh Courtney and Courtney got a good bite and caught probably one almost 30 pounds, but yeah, I bet that's the biggest. Hey guys. What do you say? Yeah, we are. I had a team call me a little while ago and they wanted to make sure that there was no over and under on this tournament. To make sure it wasn't a slot lake. So they didn't tell me what they had, but they wanted to make sure there was 
Uh, now, we have two over 30, and they were calling to make sure this wasn't one of them. Now, that, that's smart. Now, that's some stuff that I like to do. That's what I call that head game. They're either really messing with you. Or they've got several to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, they clearly know it's a five fish limit, right? No, I think they would. no over. Yeah, that's something I like to do every once in a while is call and mess with Brian. I'll do that a lot on no, November 25th. <laughs> ah. Hey, I got one for Koi. Tell Koi to come to the camera, Brian. He's, uh, I can hear you. He can hear you. I want him, I want him to see it. He's, he's changing bait. He's changing bait. Hey, Robert. I want him to see it. Oh. Uh -huh. He's in. What's that? King Cat Championship. You really want to go there? Hey, here's an idea, Brian. Here, what do you think of this? You see where that's at? You see where that's at? Right? What if we do like a traveling plaque, and then each year, which we'll do it more than once a year, but then we'll put the winner and then the pounds that they had and all that, kind of like what we do at Dalton Classic. Hey, I, I think that's a great idea. You were, yeah. All right, buddy. He, Koi talks about hey, lake hey, fishing, but, you know that yeah. was the last lake we was at right there. He said, "Oh, I oh. Leave. Ron, that's getting deep. I can't beat him on the lake." Donald beat him. Hey, Koi, this is for you. I'm doing this for you and Brian. You ready? Yeah. This is the hat that I'll be wearing down in Natchitoches. So Charles going to have to find his own fish. I'll be in my same <laughs> hole. We ran the trolling motor that night. I'll be in the same hole. The only thing Charles going to have going for him is he's going to still have the lines that we fished. They're all on my graph, buddy. <laughs> They're on ours, too. I'll fish your spot out. I'll fish it out for you. Not even gonna be there. You're the one not gonna be there. I called you out there a while ago and you told me no, you was gonna stay in Texas. You was scared. Hey. I told you I value our friendship too much to hurt your feelings that bad. <laughs> I I'll do it right here in front of everybody. I'll take you on there one on one. One on one. Don't worry about friendship. Just bring it. I'm calling you there. Calling you out. Bring that boat. <laughs> That's his hot weekend. Oh, my. It's hunting stuff, I tell you. And just for can't the record, be good at both. And just for the record, he, this was not hey, my favorite place ever. I hope he's better at hunting than he is fishing. Boy, what's your favorite place to fish? Lake Tawakany. Brian, can you talk to him for me? Brian, what are you eating now? 
<laughs> what is that? What is that? It looks good. Yeah, what, where do you get that at? A Texas thing? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is it? Like a lock pocket? Fish on the boys, fish on. I heard fish on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Live action. Live action. Hey, the sun's shining. They're biting. Yep. Let's see if they can not get tangled up. They got 14 rods in the water, I think. Charles, this is a weird tournament. I think you can use as many rods as you can have. What's weird is Koi's like, well, we should always do that. Well, they, I don't know if it matters. They got 40 rods in the boat. Pistol, I will. That's all that matters. Because you know what? Shay's only using uh, six or eight rods, and he's doing the best. You don't know what we have in the live well. <laughs> this is an important fish coming in right here. Yesterday doesn't count. <laughs> uh oh, they look like a foul hook. I don't know what you're talking about. A foul hook. It looks right in the middle. He threw it back. He got fish in the middle. We got a lot hey. of drift box in one, too. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wasn't watching. Did he just throw that fish he back? Just threw the fish in yeah, it was foul hook. Oh, uh, what's foul hook? Yeah. Fish. What the hell? He did a million bites, but no connection. Why did you do like you did bass fishing and just put your body in front of the camera and nobody was saw it? <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> Both tournament directors are on here watching. <laughs> Have you, have you seen that at some of the controversy at MLF? Yeah. yeah. I have where not. The, where the anglers are, have foul hook a couple of them and they're, they'll are they get over the side of the boat, unfoul hook it, stick the finger in their mouth, and bring it overboard and weigh it. I mean, who unhooks a fish overboard? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of controversy in the, the bass world right now. Well, don't they have a judge in the boat? Yeah, but he he can't see because he's standing up in the boat. You can't hardly you can't tell either. The cameraman's even he's got his hands under the water. Yeah. That could be a, a automatic DQ right there if they're gonna do some shady stuff like that. There he is. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get oh, it. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh skinny. Look at this. Oh God, skinny! I mean, the take, really take down the century on you. right there. <laughs> he almost reeled down before the bite happened. That's how fast skinny is. <laughs> Brian, what do you got now? I'll tell you what. I'm gonna to start fishing with Brian because he's got the best snacks on his boat. Who packs your snacks? I some beaver nuggets. That's some Charlie Nuggets. Them are Bucky, Duck, Bucky Nuggets. Look at that. Another fish in a boat. The catnappers almost got a limit. The fish is turning on. Okay, it's time. You guys are due. What does Shay have going on? I don't know. Shay, I felt that here in Illinois. You know what? I know what Shay and them's doing different. Get some more fish. What's that? Got the net. Donald Moore. Better watch. 
pulling in the wind. Yep. That's something I was going to say that I've not seen anybody else doing. I see a lot of drift stocks out there. This is probably pulled, educational. We pulled into the Charles. wind all morning. Oh, but yeah, catnappers is pulling into the wind in the morning. Okay. Maybe just drag whole baits, right? Cool. Planter board off. Let's see what they got. Look at that reel. That is impressive. Seth Macklow is going to have some competition, I think. I'd like to see Jay and Seth Macklow do a real competition. Charlie, who do you think would win that? The difference is they don't reel till the fish is What's that? Mm -hmm. Who do you think would win between Seth Macklow and Shane McDonald on a real contest? Jay. That's a good looking fish there too. In a fishing contest, Shay would. No, not a fishing contest. I said a real, like reeling down. But skinny. Oh, reeling down. <laughs> What'd she say? What'd she say? Say it again. Uh, no. Skinny. I think Seth and Coy. I think she, it, it's cutting out in the beginning. I think she's talking crap to Skinny. Yeah, she, that's how you do it, Skinny. That's how you do it. Hey, Skinny. <laughs> Sorry about that, but she's, uh, show that fish to Skinny, girl. Show them what happens. You know what you're doing. I've seen it. I think Seth and Coy would be really close competitors on reeling down. Oh, yeah. Show that bit, girl. Look at that thing. That's awesome. That's a fatty. Yeah, that's a fat little dude there. They're going to have to throw another one back. They're, they're uh, cold and fish. Brian looks like he's worried a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of time left. You know, Dillard and Hogan, they've been leaving a lot of late start. Doesn't it? I mean, it looks like they got a lot of. With catnappers, I think they got eight rods out. It looks like, from what I can see, Brian got 16 out. <laughs> I might have more than that. That just looks like a possibility of an absolute disaster of a mess. Now you know why they get all mad when they come up to us and they can only have six rods in use at a time. They're used to having 16. If you got the wrong bait on, it doesn't matter if you got two or 20. Oh, yeah, that's true. I I know know that's that's bait yeah, I want to see what Courtney's doing right now. She's, oh, they're weighing fish, but I want to see what they're not really showing us their bait. I wonder if it's how they're cutting their bait. They're calling, Brian. This is what you want to watch here. This is where it. 
they're throwing fish back. That's a scale. That's one of your scales, Brian. Yes. He's hoping he calibrated it wrong, so you throw the wrong ones back. I still don't know that that would help. Yeah. Drop off a little bit deeper. Hold on, don't oh, oh Brian can need some of them fish. <laughs> I'd take one. <laughs> Miller needs a couple too. All right, Brian. Looks like Glenn Glenn got the uh, the logo done for the you know, hold up for the whipping you're gonna get right there. Catfish challenge. That's awesome. The Red River looks like Glenn actually on the picture. Look at the guy that's got the fish on. That looks like Glenn. Hey, that looks like that looks like Glenn down in Mississippi when we down there and he lost his world record. <laughs> that one he was shaking on. Oh, uh, he's still shaking. I guarantee he was shaking for at least thirty minutes after. He said he wakes up in the middle of the night sometimes shaking on that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. Oh God. That does look like it. No, it does. You know, I don't know what, Charlie, if I had to pick a boat to be on today, I'm gonna say Cat Napper's got the most comfortable setup because they got some nice heat going. They were both in t-shirts. The dog, the captain. The next boat I would probably be in is Brian's boat because he has the most snacks. <laughs> sure. And then, yeah, then I would be in this boat here, the, the Kitty Kitty Guide Service, because they're catching the most fish. And then after my <laughs> snacks and catching fish, I'd end up in this boat taking naps. Oh my, what in the world's on your cutting board? Yeah. Wow. Buffalo, buffalo. Just swimming with it. Just buffalo sides. We're just trying to rest up for the fish that we're going to catch in the last hour. Is there a boat coming up on you? I think yeah, I'm just seeing things. Alright. Hey uh Alex. Yeah. I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk some smack to Devin Hogan because I know he, he can take what it. What I do. What I do. Okay. Talk some smack. So, so this is I'm I've never been here. Shane Courtney's never been here. And I think uh, Cutter's probably only been here once. This is kind of out of our territory, this lake. Oh, oh, this is Devin Hogan's home lake. He has a house here. On the lake. Um, is that right? 
Yeah, yeah it was like a quarter mile it, from it, the boat ramp. That's waterproof. <laughs> If anybody's gone up the river and they look over towards Lakeside and they see a house with a Texas flag roof, that's mine. That's Devin's. And and when I came here, I heard he was the uh, tournament favorite. That's where you messed up. <laughs> have y'all have y'all even got water in your live well yet? Is there any water in that live well? There is water in it. Yeah, it's full of water. That's it. So Brian, that goes to say that it doesn't matter. You can be you can be on your home body of water. And I've seen it, you know, as a tournament director, I've seen it so many times where you know you go to Charles Blair's backyard and he might not have a good finish, even though it's his home body of water. Yeah, I mean we 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 fished we fished we had to fish four events to get our four events in for Twisted Cat this year, and we fished with Charles in his backyard, and that was our worst finish um, of the season. Yeah, and that goes to show you that it doesn't matter if it's you know usually it's the people that come. I mean, look at uh, I mean right here the kitty kitty boat. Look at that. This team right here, first time on the lake, right, Courtney? Do what? First time on this lake? Yeah. I mean, I used to come here as a kid. So first time fishing this lake, and you guys are putting a mopping on these other guys. I mean, I Hogan's got a house on the lake. They have well, to be fair, I haven't fished this lake in probably eight months. <laughs> But you know what? It's only noon, so they got three hours left. Lot can change. Oh, that's for sure. And a couple of big fish. Looks like I don't know cat peppers or I don't know what they got a fish on or. No, we got boards tangled up. Oh my, that's terrible! I hate when that happens. Looks like Shay's doing some exercise. What kind of a Exercise is that? That's the <laughs> mom break exercise. Oh my! Mom is the word. Skinny's about to need that here in a second. Here he goes. Let's get this on big screen. Don't pull it out, Skinny. Don't pull it out. Is it a fish? <laughs> oh, he got him. He got him this time. He doesn't even know if it's a fish or not. That's a big fish. That's a big. Brian, what's going on? Is it a fish? Oh, wow. Good fish. Yeah, he's got one, two pounds. <laughs> oh, oh he's on the board with a fish. Got a good rod bent. Team Dragmaster, this could be it. Skinny says it's the top of a tree. Is he pulling the boat backwards or? Oh, yeah, change the speed. I don't see any splashing. Like, they don't even good. know what they got right now. Are they going to have a tail up mess? Oh my, look at the flash on that. Okay, he might go five pounds. They might got one seven pounds. <laughs> he thought he was hung up on a snack. Unless what is this? Will it go 20? Brian, I told you you needed to have Skinny in the boat today, did I not? 
Another one for me. Another big one for Skinny. So listen, Skinny to just jump in the boat in 24. You want to show it? No, we're not showing fish today. We got a limit in the live well. You can't show us the fish you caught? No, nope. <laughs> I don't want to make anybody nervous. We got a limit in the live well. Uh, yeah, you they're, I'm telling you right now, Courtney and Shay, are, they're so nervous right now. You know why they're so nervous? Because you didn't put another one back. <laughs> And they got another fish on, maybe? Or then maybe they're making a move. Getting in the trees. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this makes me want to go fishing. Harley, what's the tip down there? Made it blurry. So who are you guys making a move then, Justin? I think we're gonna have to forget them. Justin, you guys got a lot of uh, people watching you. Live. Brian, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Where'd you go? I can. Get, get more snacks? No, I'm going to take my jacket off. It's getting warm. All right. Well, I'm going to get ready to jump off here. Uh, but this has been great here at Lake Whitney. Uh, thanks for everybody jumping on today and doing a little bit of live on the water and Coffee and catfish. I kind of like coffee and catfish. I like the coffee. And I'm the only one drinking. I'm the only one drinking coffee. Hey. Hey, Brian. Hey, thank you. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Kevin, you know how good Kevin is to me. Look what he did for me. I saw that post. Helped, That's awesome. He helped me out. Look at that. I saw that. Look at that. 
Wait, what is that? Hey, okay, listen. That's cool when he slides his boat off down the ramp on the Mississippi. Oh. I can put it in. I can get it off. Well, I'm smart enough not to unhook it until I'm at the water. Yeah, that's true. You, you All right. know. Hold on. Hey, Shay and Courtney, yeah. everybody, Justin, thank, thank you guys for being on. Good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, Courtney, next time. Catnappers, thank you guys for being on. Dillard and Hogan. Appreciate you, buddy. We'll do this again. Everybody, good luck. Say, hey, when you guys, after you weigh, send me some text and let me know how you do or send me some pictures and I'll make a post. But I appreciate you guys being on and uh, we'll do this again. And if you guys want a piece of that Red River, you know where yep. to go. Come we hope you learned look. something today, Alex. <laughs> we hope you yeah. learned something today. Remember what your hat says. Find your own fish. Coy, we'll see about that. Oh, you haven't hey, beat me in a tournament hey, yet. Hey, so just hey, hey, hey uh, Coy, yeah, me, and Charles, Coy. me and Charles mopped that ass at Sea Arc. When you and Seth wouldn't bet $1,000 with me that morning, we mopped that ass. <laughs> wow, it's getting deep. I know, I don't know why hey, you're leaving. Hey, Coy, hey, Coy, you think? It is. I think he should really thumb the knack of it. Hey, we enjoyed it. So, really? uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Alex. I'll, I'll, we'll send some pictures. I'll take pictures at the weigh-in. Yeah, send me some pictures and I'll make a post. Like I said, hopefully you guys catch some more fish. Okay. Dillard and Hogan, hopefully you guys catch a fish. Yeah, thank <laughs> <laughs> wish you. Up that was wrong. We, we might be sandbagging, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. Brian, you never know. You never know. Remember, they went uh, they went dark for about an hour and a half. Yeah, like like uh, oh, uh, Baldwin did at Keystone. <laughs> yeah. You know what? What y'all don't know is every single tournament we have on this lake, we get to our starting spot, and Devin and us are usually about 50 yards apart. In the same spot. That's when we decided we just team up and not have to share our starting spot. You better, yeah, you're running out of time. Yeah, we got plenty of time. You, you know what, Brian? Yes, sir. One thing's for sure. Listen, you admit to this. One thing for sure. When me and Coy's in the boat with you. You got the best entertainment. Oh, it's always entertainment. It's always entertainment. It's always a good time, Charles. <laughs> Except for when uh Toy knows how to not make catching it. any fish and you're getting hung up every five minutes. I don't know if you call that entertainment or when you call it psychologist. We got to have Brian, Brian we ain't catch a fish. Yeah, hey Brian, what do you call the, li the live on the water at MRM? That was an ass whooping, I guess. So that's what you want me to say. <laughs> Y'all were mopping the floor with us. Yeah, I'm definitely mopping our. Yep. I'm just glad we pre fished right, that spot for you guys and gave you a. We were almost going to go home on Friday after we see you guys. Yep, you'd ha you'd be on a fish, and we got a monster, and you'd hang up. But then you don't. What you don't know is that I have binoculars in my boat, and that monster you had was three pounds. Right. And you were just trying to get in our head. Oh, we got in your head. But you know what? You know what? It all, comes, it all comes down to tournament day. That's true. And we definitely failed. Yeah, yeah, we're talking. Y'all were yeah, talking Charles, about Glacier. Charles was texting us that night before the tournament and said, if there's any way that I can get in y'all's boat. And I told Charles, I said, man, just stick with yeah, Alex. Okay. He'll pull it through for you, buddy. Oh, you're killing me. I wish you could. Uh, you, know, you, know, hey, you know what? 
Y'all were talking about Glenn a while ago, and I would really love to get Glenn back in the boat one more time. 100%. He'll go, just tell him when. But yeah, we appreciate it. And we'll see everybody else at the white uh, weigh in. Yeah, good luck. Have fun. Be safe. And we'll do this again. And then you can also join us Monday night for our Twisted Cat Live podcast at 7. We'll kind of go over some new stuff again, what we got coming for 2024. Uh, and again, our first, all of our registration that for the tournaments we have are already up if you want to sign up. Um, like the Ozarks, we got first tournament December 30th, uh, New Year's Eve weekend. And uh, we hope to see you there. Have a good rest of your weekend. I'm going to try to go fishing this weekend, so we'll see. So good luck. Charlie, thanks for coming on. Brian, everybody. Thanks, Alec. You guys get the top four spots today. We're going to work on it. All right. Well, good luck. We'll see you all later. All right, see you. What for you on a fish, Brian? Yeah. See you, Charlie. All right, so that was it. That was our catfish, our coffee and catfish um, on Saturday. It's kind of fun doing that, so we'll try to do some more of that stuff. Hopefully, I get to go fishing, maybe take Rhett out fishing for some channel cats tomorrow here on the Mississippi River. Um, again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about what we have coming up this season, we'll go live again Monday night at 7, talk about that. Registration is open. You can go to twistedcatoutdoors.com. Again, happy Veterans Day. Um, enjoy your day if you're out there on the water. I'm going to finish it off with the Fishing for Freedom video again. If you didn't get to see it again, if you want to be a part of that, let us know. It's, it's June 1st, and it's an awesome event. Um, just watch the video. It really is touching, and it gives some purpose when you want to go give back, and there's no better way to give back than taking a veteran out on the water. So. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll have a good rest of your weekend. If I can get it to play. Well, let's see here. All right, just one second. All right, now we should work. And again, this is an awesome video. Just take a, take a look at it. And again, if you want to be a part of it, we'd love to have you. All right, here it goes. Fishing for freedom may have actually saved my life. It's uh, kind of choke up about it. It's, it's, it's absolute truth. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> and when you get on a gentleman's boat, you become family. It's, it's, it's brought me, it's got me a hometown now. I have a home, a new home in Quincy. <laughs> the program that they do for the veterans here is above and above, it's just outstanding. Uh, from the World War II veteran to the, uh, uh, the Vietnam and to the Iraq. It is uh, very outstanding. And as the young lady said, it is all about family. Uh, family is number one. And when you get on a gentleman's boat, you become family. And the program is generated just for family. My name is Louis Deemers. I'm from Quincy, born here, raised, went World War II. I've met a real good friend. He's taken me fishing four times now, and this will be the fifth coming up. And uh, we're looking forward to catching that big one like everybody else, you know. I think it's a great organization. Uh, it's amazing me Quincy pulled off something like this. This is really 
I, I, it make time. So Lou and I met uh, 2018 here at Fishing for Freedom. Uh, took him out fishing. Um, 94 years old. He crawled in and out of the boat uh, better, really, than than I did, and I hate to hate to say that, but uh, he caught the biggest fish, outfished me, and uh, we've been fishing together ever since uh, since that year. So it's uh, I don't think Lou really understands how much of an honor it is for me to take him out every year. So we we have the banquet where we honor the warriors, um, and then we thank them for their service. Uh, give them a, a great meal. We're going to have a banquet. We're going to take them out in the river. We're going to fish, and you're going to have a friendship for life. And that's what we ended up doing. And it's been growing exponentially for the last 13 years. It's up to, I think we have 300 soldiers this year, which is quite a feat for all the volunteers are here that are participating. This this means a lot to me because it, it's 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 brought me it's got me a hometown now. I have a home, a new home in Quincy. Um, they helped me with getting an actual physical home. I, I went through some rough times a few years ago and uh, the people that I've met through fishing for freedom somehow got me a house to live in so i'm really grateful for the i mean adam kyle uh glenn sanders bob haverman i mean everybody that is if they're they really are family to me and it's that's i mean it's you know blood thick of the water all that i it's these people are are absolute family for me me and and my other family you know my real family <laughs> about eight years ago i got a chance to go to fishing for freedom I didn't really know what it was, but uh, I got a chance to go. I was so broke, believe it or not, that I took a train. Okay? And uh, a local guy fishes catfish, Buddy Weisenberger, actually picked me up from the from the train station. Okay? That's how broke I was. And I didn't have a car that was working to get here or nothing. And uh, you know, fishing for freedom, pay for the hotel, all that. I got all my free stuff. First fishing pole in, in years since I was a kid. And, and first fishing tournament ever that I was ever a part of. And uh, I'll be darned, we won the whole thing. Long and short of things, here it is years later. I'm celebrating five years clean and sober next month, okay, which is just mind-boggling. Um, I took my own car here with my own boat and took a veteran out myself now, which is just just amazing you know, it's to be able to do that. And to see it from the other side of things with the people on the side of the road with the flags and motorcycles, that's just absolutely just 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 amazing amazing event um uh, married live in south carolina drove a thousand miles to get here <laughs> and hoping i can do it every year i've been doing this this is my third year with lewis jordan amazing event for all the warriors to get out and experience camaraderie having fun and your boater is becomes a, like family and you get to go fish with them even outside of this my boater lewis jordan we go over to his home lake and go fishing and also go camping with him other times throughout the year. I've been to Fishing for Freedom every year. I've watched it grow from starting out with 60 wars to about 300. I come every year just to, you know, be able to fish, meet people, and the appreciation from the community and all the hard work and efforts that everybody puts together for it. Look forward to it. Every single year, it's nice to, to give back to some of the veterans, and plus I love to fish, so uh, it's always a good time. Everybody, these guys do a great job putting this together. One thing positive can lead to two, can lead to three, can lead to a complete turn, turn, turnaround in your life, and uh, you know, God willing, it can all come together. I really gotta thank them for everything. Appreciate it. Hope you had a good time out there today. Thank you for coming back service yeah if that doesn't hit home i don't know what does again happy veterans day and i'm asking you to come help us, help us at that event be a boater you take a veteran out for a time a lot of these veterans don't get a chance to go on the water go fishing as you see in the video it's changed people's lives it's saved lives so again you know we average around 300 veterans and over 200 boaters from bass to crappie to catfish 
And again, we'd love to have you come help us. Quincy, Illinois, June 1st, Fishing for Freedom. If you have any questions at all, um, registration will start after the new year. And again, we're asking you to help give back and there's no better way to give back than that. So, all righty, I'm out. Have a good rest of your weekend. We'll see you Monday night at seven live for the Twisted Cat podcast. All right, enjoy your weekend.